to consolidate your credit card or other debts? Just log on. Number two. Yeah. This just in, you are looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. The CNN Center right now is just beginning to work on this story, obviously calling our sources and trying to figure out exactly what happened, but clearly something relatively devastating happening this morning there on the south end of the island of Manhattan. That is, once again, a picture of one of the towers of the World Trade Center. We could see these pictures. It's obviously uh, something devastating has happened. And again, unconfirmed report that a plane has crashed into one of the towers there. We are efforting more information on this subject as it becomes available to you. Right now, we've got Sean Murtaugh. He is a CNN producer on the telephone right now. Sean, what can you tell us about what you know? This is uh, Sean Murtaugh. I just was uh, standing on the... Uh, uh, Vice President of Finance. Sean. Vice President of Finance for CNN. Sean, we're on the air right now. What, what can you tell us about this situation? Hello? Yes, yeah, Sean, you're on the air yes, right yes. now. Uh, can, what, go ahead. What can you tell us? I, I just witnessed a plane that appeared to be cruising uh, slightly mm -hmm. lower than normal at altitude over New York City, and it appears to have crashed into, uh, I don't know which tower it is, but it hit directly in the middle of uh, one of the World Trade Center towers. Sean, what kind of plane? Was it a small plane, a, a it jet? Was a, uh, it was a jet. It uh, looked like a two-engine jet, um, maybe a 737. You're talking about a large passenger commercial large jet? large passenger commercial jet. And where were you when you saw this? I am on the 21st floor of 5 Penn Plaza. Did it appear that the plane was having any difficulty flying? Yes, it did. It was teetering uh, back and forth, wingtip to wingtip. And it looks like it has crashed into probably 20 stories from the top of the World Trade Center, maybe the 80th to 85th floor. There is smoke billowing out of the uh, World Trade Center. Sean, what happened next? Does it, does it appear to you that the plane is still inside the World Trade Center? From my angle, I'm, I'm viewing south towards the Statue of Liberty and towards the World Trade Center. It looks like it has is embedded in the, in the building. I can't see from my my vantage point, whether it has come out the other side. Sean, what about uh, on the ground or any debris that has hit down there? Can my, you see my vantage anything? point is too far from the World Trade Center to right. make any uh, determination of that. Did you see any smoke, any flames coming out of the engines of that plane? No, I did not. The, the plane just uh, was, was uh, coming in low and the t wing tips tilted back and forth and then it, it flattened out. It looks like it's uh, hit at a slight angle into the World Trade Center. I can see I can see flames now coming out the side of the building and smoke continues to billow. Well, generally, is that a traffic area in New York for, for aircraft? It is not a normal uh, uh, flight pattern. I'm a frequent f uh, traveler between Atlanta and New York for business and it is not a normal flight pattern to come directly over Manhattan. Usually they come up either over the, the Hudson River heading north and, and pass alongside the island of Manhattan or if they're taking off from LaGuardia, they usually take off uh, over Shea Stadium and, 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 and take a, gain altitude around the island of Manhattan. It's rare that you have a jet crossing directly over um, the island of Manhattan. Just for our viewers who are be just tuning in right now, you're looking at a live picture of the World Trade Center Tower where, according to eyewitness Sean Murtaugh, he is a vice president of finance, an eyewitness to what he describes as a twin-engine plane or possibly a 737 passenger jet flying into the World Trade Center. It appears to be still embedded inside the building. Sean, are you in a position right now to hear whether any sirens are going, any ambulances, any sort of response to this yet? Uh, not, not from my vantage point. I'm probably a mile and a half, two miles from the World Trade Center. It, it is a, a remarkable scene as we're seeing right now. Flames still coming out of the windows, black smoke billowing from what appears to be all sides. Uh, obviously, uh, windows shattered and steel jutting out from the structure and right Sean, now. And Sean, once again, we're looking at these pictures. And I you're see telling them in my us, office. I have yeah, them on all my TVs. And you're telling us you believe the plane is still remains uh, embedded. I, I can't tell from my vantage point. All right. Sean, thank you so much thank for your eyewitness much. account there. Right now, we want to go to our affiliate NYW reporting on this as we speak. A little girl in his arms. Did you see what happened, sir? 
Did you see what happened? What happened? Well, I was in the PATH train and there was a huge explosion sound. Everyone came out. A large section of the building is blown out around like the 80th floor. Did, was it hit by something or was it something it was inside? inside? It, it was, was inside. inside. Because it looked out, everything was coming out. Everything all was the coming windows out. were coming out, all the papers were What is on out. the sidewalk? I didn't see anything. Were there any people hurt, do you know? Um, I just ran and everyone in the PATH train just ran. I don't know if anyone was hurt, but I assume they were because the windows were all blown out. All right, thank you. Well, Ollie, you would have to assume uh, a very, very terrible situation if that indeed is the case, because I'm sure uh, there were people, there were people up there in that, uh, there were people up there in that uh, World Trade Center. Now we have lost again. Our transmitter is on top of the World Trade Center, so we apparently uh, have consequently lost contact with Dick Oliver. But we are on the on the phone with an eyewitness, uh, Rosa. Can you hear me? Is Rosa there? Hello? Rosa? Yes. Uh, this is Jim Ryan here in the studio. Hi. Uh, what is your last name, please? Cardona Rivera. Okay. All right, again, uh, you're looking at pictures now. We uh, understand from a CNN Vice President, Sean Murtaugh, who was an eyewitness to this. We believe a commercial jet has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. And you can see the smoke billowing out. There are flames billowing out there. And uh, a commercial jet crashing into one of these towers. At this point, we do not have official injury uh, updates to bring you. But we are only uh, now beginning to put to, together the pieces of this uh, horrible incident. Right, just a few seconds ago, we were tuning in to uh, one of our affiliates in New York, uh, WNYW. Right now, we want to go to an eyewitness on the telephone right now, Jean. What can you tell us about what you saw? Uh, I can tell you that I was watching TV and there was this uh, sonic boom and the TV went out and I thought maybe that the Concorde was back in service because uh, I've heard about those sonic booms and I got up to my window. I live in Battery Park City right next to the Twin Towers and I looked up and the side of the World Trade Center exploded right when I looked up and uh, at that point debris started falling I couldn't believe what I was watching can you hear anything from your position right now ambulances sirens absolutely positively there are crowds of people downstairs in Battery Park City everybody's come out from the buildings this is the financial area in Wall you know in uh, Manhattan and there's a lot of fire engines uh, I can see them from my window Jean can you tell us uh, I don't know if you can tell which tower it is uh, that's on fire right now or, or the kinds of services that are inside that tower I can't tell what's inside. Uh, it's the northern tower uh, versus the southern tower, and it seems to be on all sides of the building, uh, from what I can tell. Uh, the uh, west side, the south side, and it looks like smoke's coming from the east side as well. Gene, can you see any of the debris currently on the ground area? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it, it's continuing to kind of flutter down like leaflets. And uh, at first, there was just tons of debris, and it continues to fall out. And, uh, it looks like these uppermost floors uh, are definitely on fire. Mm. Can you see any actual uh, people in that area who may have, been, uh, may have been hit by any of this debris or were not able to get out of the way? Can you see any crowds that may be too close to where they should be? Anything like that? No, I don't think so. And uh, it's not a highly trafficked area mm -hmm. at the base of the World Trade Center. So that's one fortunate thing. Jean, right now we're continuing to look at uh, pictures of this devastating scene. According to Sean Murtaugh, Vice President of Finance, he witnessed what he described as a twin-engine plane, possibly a 737. He was almost absolutely sure that it was a large passenger jet that, that went into that plane. Jean, you're saying that you didn't see anything initially. You didn't see a plane actually approach the building. I had right? no idea it was a plane. I just, uh, I just saw the entire uh, top part of the World Trade Center explode. So when you, uh, I turned on the TV when I heard they said it was a plane. Right. It was really strange. Were you there living in New York during the World Trade Center bombing? No, I wasn't. Fortunately so. When you say a sonic boom, did you actually feel anything? Were things shaking in your apartment? Uh, you, you know, yeah, you could feel it. It was just a gigantic sonic boom. The TV nearly, it, it went off for a second and then it went back on. And you, the windows you know, you felt the vibrations on the windows. You were saying it's not a high traffic area uh, usually, but c can you guesstimate uh, how many people may be in an area like that at, uh, at this, this hour of the morning? Uh, it would be hard to say. There, there is a huge courtyard between the two World Trade Center buildings, and the only issue might have been uh, tourists or business people out mm -hmm. in this 
courtyard area and they possibly would have been hit but the people that are immediately around the base of the world trade center i would say at any given time you're talking about maybe twenty or thirty people at best uh... we were talking with sean murtaugh earlier and he said this is not normally an area where you would see some sort of aircraft uh, certainly obviously that low but in that that is not a high traffic uh, area in terms of flights uh... i don't know about flights you know uh, i have a balcony down here in battery park city and they have that needle sticking out of the top of the world trade center and i've always wondered you know uh... if anyone would kind of get too close to the building uh... you know and and accidentally bear into it. Jean, tell us a little bit about that area and how emergency crews would uh, be able to access that area. Would that be relatively uh, difficult or, or easy to access for emergency people? I would imagine it would be slightly difficult because uh, to get around the base of the World Trade Center building, there's really only the one street entrance. Uh, the other sides of the building are surrounded by other buildings in the courtyard and uh, so it's just this west side highway, this one major street that runs up the west side of Manhattan that makes it accessible for the fire engines. And, you know, it's amazing to sit here and watch this building on fire, and you've got this hmm. tiny uh, little fire engine that I'm watching. That's all you yeah. see right now is the, the, the one well, fire engine? The, where the, uh, the fire engines are, it's a little bit obscured by other buildings. Right. Gene, let me ask you, I know I'm asking you to be a bit of an expert on the World Trade Center, but there's a famous viewing deck for uh, tourists mm -hmm. on one of the towers. When you say that this is uh, the North Tower, is this the one that services a lot of the tourists to get their view and get to the restaurant at the top? As a matter of fact, it is. And uh, there's a, as I'm sure you can see, uh, there's a ton of smoke coming out right now. Um, I'm just guessing the, uh, the fire seems to be worse on, uh, it, it looks like it's about... 15 floors down from the top of the building. Yeah, one of the eyewitnesses, one of our affiliates, uh, was talking to said that she thought that this was on the 80th floor. We know that there's an open air deck uh, 110 stories high, and mm -hmm. the uh, glass enclosed observatory is on the 107th floor. So there is the possibility that people may very well be trapped up there. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Jean Yearman. You're very welcome. Eyewitness here to uh, a loud sonic boom she described as she was sitting inside her apartment and she looked up and saw the side of the World Trade Center exploded into flames and black smoke. We are going to join one of, another one of our New York affiliates, WABC, for their live coverage. Plane overhead, and then all of a sudden I, I thought it sounded kind of loud, um, louder than I looked up, and all of a sudden it smashed right dead into the center of the World Trade Center. Um, big. Uh, big flash of flame, uh, fire coming out from all over. Then the, all the um, the bricks is a huge hole right now. Um, it almost looks like the plane probably went through. I'm not sure. Winston, can you see? Are you on the north side there, where the the plane made uh, contact? Yes, I am. Now, when you say a huge hole, uh, one of our earlier uh -oh. witnesses, Libby Clark, said not much of the plane came down off the building. Much no, of it went totally right in. into the building. It's in the building, that, from what you can see. Right. Now, can yeah. you see if there's a lot of debris downstairs, Winston? Um, no, because it looked like it's it inverted. With the impact, everything went inside the building. Inside. Um, the only thing that came out was a little bit of the, um, the outside awning. But I'd say the huge, the hole is, let me just get a better look right now. Okay, go ahead. We'll the, um, I'd say the hole takes about, looks about six, seven floors were taken out. And there's more oh, explosions there's, oh, right now. Hold on, people are running. Wixen, hold, on. hold on just a moment. We've got an explosion inside. The building's exploding right now. you got people running up the street. Okay. Hold on, I'll tell you what's going on. Okay, just uh, put, put Winston on pause there for just a moment. Okay, while the he... whole building just exploded some more. The whole top part. Okay. The building's still intact. People are running up the street. Uh, am the... I still connected? Winston, this would support probably what Libby and you both said, that perhaps the fuselage was in the building that would cause a second explosion such as that. That's what just happened then. That would, that certainly, yeah, it looks up. like, um, I, we're getting word that perhaps. Okay, hold on, the, the people here are, everybody's panicking. All right, what Winston, you know, Winston, let me put Winston on hold for just a moment. Okay, I don't widow, know how much longer we're staying. I'm inside of a diner right now. Well, Winston, you know what? If you could give us a call back, I just don't want to panic here on the air. Let's just uh, take some of our pictures from News Chopper 7. Now, one of our producers said perhaps 
a second plane was involved, and let's not let's not even speculate to that point, but at least put it out there that perhaps that may have happened. Uh, the second explosion would certainly back the theory from a couple of eyewitnesses that the plane fuselage perhaps stayed in those upper buildings. Now, if you look at the second building, there are two that both twin towers now are on fire. Now, this was not the case. Am I correct? A couple of moments ago, this is the second twin tower now on fire and we're going to check on the second flight if perhaps that had happened this all began at about 8:48 this morning again what we know in case you're just joining us a small plane not a Cessna type or five or six seater but instead perhaps a passenger flight ran into the north side of the World Trade Center as you can see the the second explosion that you're looking at now in the second twin tower it has spread much debris much more debris than the first explosion or the first accident uh... if there is if is winston still on the line with us okay he's not there but um, do we have i'll just talk to my producer do we have a, an eyewitness that perhaps sees better than we do from these pictures again you can see that there is debris falling off come on dip Okay, we actually have an Eyewitness News reporter, Dr. Jay Adlersberg, who is downtown at the time, and he is on the phone with us live. Dr. Jay, what can you tell us? Hello, Steve. Um, I'm actually uptown at 86th and Riverside. I can see the World Trade Center from about half the building um, uh, up to the top. And about five minutes ago, as I was watching the smoke, um, a small plane, I... It looked like a propeller plane came in from the west and um, uh, about 20 or 25 stories below the top of the center it disappeared for a, a second and then exploded um, uh, behind a water tower. So I couldn't tell whether it hit the building or not, but it was very visible that a plane had come in uh, at a low altitude oh, okay. and appeared to crash into the uh, World Trade Center. Dr. J, we're going to take a look at videotape just moments ago of the second plane hitting the World Trade Center. That is spectacular pictures. I don't know if you, you could see the plane, and that too was a passenger plane. If perhaps some type of navigating system or some type of electronics would have put two planes into the World Trade Center within it looks like about 18 minutes of each other you want to go to we have another copy there is the second plane another passenger plane hitting the world trade center these pictures are frightening indeed these are just minutes between each other so naturally you will guess and you will speculate and perhaps ask the question if some type of navigating equipment is awry that two commuter planes would run into the World Trade Centers at the same time. Our director, you're speaking in my ear at this point. You are looking at live pictures right now of the World Trade Centers. Again, we now have two passenger planes within 18 minutes of each other smashing into the World Trade Centers. Dr. J, are you still with us on the phone? I'm still with you, Steve. Dr. J, this is just frightening pictures indeed, and, and I would assume, or you would naturally think that when they've been listening to some of the coverage this. provided for us by our affiliate WABC out of New York City. Let's go now and check our other affiliate WNBC to get the latest, I'm sorry, WNYW, WNYW here, live coverage here of this amazing picture we're getting from Lower Manhattan, two planes, one hitting each of the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center. They come by and they say, what happened, what happened? And you just got to say, something hit the building, and then something hit both buildings. Well, we, uh, we, we saw clearly, uh, we didn't see the first one, but we saw clearly mm -hmm. that a plane uh, deliberately crashed mm -hmm. into the, one of the upper floors of the World Trade Center. That was the second plane. So two planes mm -hmm. uh, crashed into the uh, upper floors of each of the World Trade Center towers. And I'm just, uh, I understand now that uh, Port Authority headquarters are in uh, one yeah. of those buildings somewhere mm -hmm. near that location. Uh, Jim, I, I yes. don't know whether we've confirmed that this was an aircraft or, to be more specific, some people said they thought they saw a missile. Well, I don't know how people could dis dis differentiate 
but we might keep mm. open the possibility that this was a missile attack mm. uh, on these buildings. Uh, Ali, I must say that uh, we have an eyewitness who said it was a large plane that crashed first. And then uh -huh. as, as we were watching the live picture here in the studio, we saw a plane mm. crash, into the, crash into the other tower of the World Trade Center. And again, let's uh, just to be sure, th there oh, it is. Oh. There it is. The plane mm. went right through mm. the other tower of the World Trade Center. That is a very hard thing to watch. And clearly, these are incredible pictures that we're watching this morning. These, thanks to our affiliate WNYW in New York. You are looking at this, at this picture. It is the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, both of them being damaged by impacts from planes. We saw one happen at about maybe nine minutes before the top of the hour. And just moments ago, so maybe 18 minutes after the first impact, the second tower was impacted with a, by another, what appeared to be another passenger plane. Uh, in fact, we've got some tape replay of that. Do we have the tape available right now? Here's the plate. Here is the tape. You see the plane coming in from what looks like the east side, and it blows into the building with the flames and the smoke billowing out the other side of the tower. It's hard for me to tell exactly which is the north side and which is the south side, but it appears it's coming out of the north side there. Incredible pictures. These happened just moments ago. And I believe we have someone with us on the line. Ira Firmer. It's if we have Ira Firmer, the former NTSB spokesman. And you're watching these pictures as well with us, are you not? Yeah, I'm with you on CNN. What, what can you make of what we have seen, and particularly with this replay we just saw moments ago? That's absolutely inexplicable. There, there shouldn't be any aircraft in that area, much less something heading what looked like deliberately for the World Trade Center Tower. You don't think there's any way this could be any kind of an accident, no kind of a navigational equipment failure or some sort of a, a navigational quirk by a beacons or whatever? No, you've got incredibly good visibility at this point, and no pilot is going to be relying on navigational equipment uh, in such a circumstance that would uh, cause them to crash into the World Trade Center. How far out of the way from an approach to either LaGuardia or Kennedy would a plane have to be to hit the World Trade Center? There are approaches that uh, come up uh, along the Hudson River, which is to the west of the World Trade Center, uh, and those aircraft usually wind up going into LaGuardia. So you can come within uh, a mile or two of the World Trade Center, but uh, it is such a visible object as you're approaching New York City that uh, it's just not possible for a pilot during the daytime uh, to have taken uh, a course that would put it right into the World Trade Center. And a second occurrence uh, within a few minutes is beyond belief. And as you can see, there definitely is no weather problem, so weather would be uh, definitely ruled out as a factor in this case. Yes, the course is a normal course, I mean, for commercial pilots coming into New York. It certainly appeared uh, from the video on CNN that uh, the uh, second aircraft was heading for the tower and uh, that it was a commercial-sized aircraft. Could you tell, have a better idea about what size that plane was? It was kind of hard for me to tell. You're an expert in these matters. Could you look at that tape and tell what size that plane was? Uh, it would have to be slowed down, and uh, you'd need more than one angle for it because you'd want to see how many engines on it, uh, the shape of the tail. Well, if it's, if it's possible, gang, could we, guys, could we go ahead and replay that tape right now? Do we have the tape ready of the second plane impacting? We've got, we're going to put that tape on in just a second. Here, we're about to roll it now. Uh, if you can, sir, I don't want you to, spe to speculate, but if you can, give us an idea of what you think might be at play here. What kind of plane we're talking about, or at least what size, if we're talking about one that would hold, say, 100 people, one that would hold 300 people, uh, from the, what you see, you know, we can, we'll have to back the tape up further than that, guys. Here we go. It's very hard to get a perspective on it. Uh, I don't know how far away we are at this, but that looks to me um, like it could be uh, certainly a passenger jet and uh, one of those aircraft that could hold a hundred or more people. Uh, I caution you at this point uh, to wonder whether or not that airplane was occupied by more than just a pilot or a crew. Um, we don't necessarily know that there were any passengers aboard that airplane. Understood. Understood. Uh, Darren Kagan joining the conversation here, sir. But there's no indication that there would be any air traffic on purpose in the area of the World Trade Center at this time of day, or any time of day for that matter. 
well, not directly into the World Trade Center. No, but you even be, close to it. You would be clearing the World Trade Center by a few miles. Normal operations. And when you're looking at the pictures that you see uh, with all this smoke and fire and all that, it's just absolutely unbelievable to think that a flight crew uh, that wouldn't ordinarily see the World Trade Center, wouldn't ordinarily be on course, would now not see this as a flaming beacon to avoid. Let me ask you this about the airspace. Given that it appears that two different airplanes have flown into the World Trade Center in 18 minutes, is it possible to shut down that airspace and keep another plane from doing something just like it? I don't think that this represents an accident. And so I don't think that we're talking about having to now keep other aircraft away. Uh, this picture that uh, CNN is broadcasting live is probably from a range of uh, a couple of miles away. And you can see that. No, certainly that. But if there was somebody who intentionally was trying to do the same thing again, is there a way to shut down the airspace to keep planes out? No, you can't shut down airspace. There's no gate. There's no fence in airspace. All you can do is broadcast that that airspace is closed. But if someone is intent on breaking through it, that happens with our military airspace all the time mm -hmm. off the coast. And I want to bring, in a, bring up a couple of points right now, if I may. We have just been told that President Bush has been informed of this incredible tragedy happening in New York. He did have an event scheduled at 9.30 this morning, which we were going to cover here. He has just canceled that event. We expect he will probably have some comments fairly soon, and we will bring those to you live the moment that uh, we understand he is available. But I, I'd like to ask you once again, uh, Ira, if I can get back to asking you about this particular crash. Is it possible that th those who are tracking planes either at LaGuardia, through the, the radar, uh, can, can I give us some more information about exactly what happened here? Uh, if Were these planes, I guess, using beacons to come in or if there's some sort of identification of these planes as they approach the New York area? Yes, there should be if they were under air traffic control. You've got uh, one eyewitness telling you that the, the first aircraft flew from Westchester and flew down through Manhattan and directly into the World Trade Center, uh, presumably the North Tower. Uh, and now you've got, uh, you're showing the other aircraft uh, coming in, looks to me like it would be from the West, uh, into the other tower. Um, those planes could be, should be, normally would be under air traffic control, uh, but it is also entirely possible for aircraft to fly into, through, or over New York, or in this case into a building in New York, without being under the control. And we use that word advisedly. All that means is information is what air traffic control is, mm -hmm. um, and just operate and do whatever they want if they don't follow the rules of air traffic control. I refer to we thank you very, very much for your insight. And the longer we talk, the, the less convinced many will become that this was an accident. We thank you very much for your insight. More information on that just ahead. Now we want to bring in Todd Harris. Todd, on the scene, saw what happened. Todd, are you with us? Yes, I had a perfect view. And uh, the plane was coming in. I, I noticed it a second before it hit the building. It looked like it, it was moving slowly and it lined itself up to hit the building directly. Are you talking about the first plane or the second plane? The first plane. plane. And Todd, it, tell it, us exactly where you are, where you had this great view. I, I was on Highway 278, like a dead-on view of the, the side that it hit the building. All right, Todd, hang on. We're going to continue our conversation. Leon has something to, to get, jump in here with. Yes, I'm checking the wires even as we speak. The Associated Press is, is reporting right now that the FBI in Washington is investigating reports that these two plane crashes are the result of foul play. There is a report here by the Associated Press of a possible plane hijacking. We don't say, they don't say two, but they say a possible plane hijacking. Let's go to Kelly Arena, who's on the phone right now from Washington. Kelly? Hello, Kelly, Kelly Arena, are you there? Is All right, Kelly Arena, okay, there's, there's Kelly. There's Kelly. You, Kelly, what have you learned? Okay, well, an FBI official has just told CNN that they are investigating, but they have not yet determined whether or not this was indeed a terrorist act. The official that I spoke to said that so far there has been no communication no one claiming responsibility for uh, either of those crashes. Uh, there is an investigation underway. If there is anything to be said officially, it will come out of the uh, 
the New York City field office of the FBI, which is uh, right now involved in that investigation to find out whether or not it was. But I have to tell you, I repeat, right now the FBI has not determined whether or not this is a terrorist act, although they are investigating. All right, thank you very much. Kelly Arita, we appreciate that. Darren, let's go, yeah, let's go ahead and bring back in Todd Harris. Todd, are you still with us? We don't have Todd. Okay, once again, if you're just warning us, if you're just joining us, the, the breaking story that we're following out of New York City, uh, within the span of 18 minutes, two separate planes crashing into the World Trade Center. Um, the rescue operations underway, not clear. We're going to show you, this is the second plane after the first tower was already on fire. This happened just minutes ago. We'll let the pictures tell the story. You saw it live here on CNN as it happened. The plane crashed right into the side of the World Trade Center, causing a huge explosion. Now, as we speak, and we're showing you live pictures now, smoke and fire taking place in both towers of the World Trade Center. And it appeared that second plane that we actually did have on videotape on its approach toward that tower actually turned. And uh, I have to think, I'm not an expert in these right. things, so I don't know, but it would seem as though that move actually may have caused much more damage. Uh, this, these and, are incredible pictures, as you can see here. Let's keep the pictures up as we go ahead and talk to more eyewitnesses. Joe Trachtenberg joining us on the phone. Joe, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you tell us what your vantage point is and what you've seen so far? Um, well, we got, uh, I heard on the radio that uh, one of the uh, towers was on fire, and we went to a uh, high point in our building, which is on the 25th floor, and you had a clear view of the uh, both World Trade Centers, and the one tower was uh, smoking hard. And uh, there was another plane that was flying low, and we just looked at it, and before you know it, just kamikaze, boom, right into the other tower, and mass explosion, windows flying. It was horrible. I'm still distraught looking were, at it. Were you close enough to see or get a general idea of what kind of plane that was that flew in the second time? Well, uh, I'm not an expert on planes, but it wasn't a, uh, didn't seem like a big passenger jet. It was a smaller type plane because it made some pretty radical turn and you know they were flying low and you, you're not used to see big planes flying over Manhattan because I don't think you're allowed to but uh, it was pretty tough. And explain to me again what your vantage point is, where you are in the city looking at this. Um, we're in uh, Chelsea, it's uh, like uh, 25th Street and 7th Avenue and uh, there's, it's clear looking all the way downtown and you could see the buildings, you know the whole downtown because it's a clear day and it's, it's a disaster. And once again, describe for us what you saw as that plane went to the second building. Uh, that plane just flew straight into the second building on the downtown side, it appeared. It was just a huge explosion and smoke just immediately and fire started immediately uh, coming from the second tower as it hit and there was glass flying everywhere. All right, looks like we have a little bit of audio problem with that, so I'm going to say thanks to Joe Trachtenberg for uh, talking to us and telling us what he saw. We were watching it right here, live on CNN, as that plane went in. He had a closer vantage point and could see, as you, as you heard, Leon, he was saying he doesn't think it was a big jet, uh, but a smaller plane, yeah. closer up from where he could see it. Well, we do have a, a tape of a, a recounting of by another witness, another eyewitness. We're going to go to some tape that we're getting from our affiliate WABC in New York, where they interviewed an eyewitness who saw the second crash as it happened. Will the, um, I'd say the hold takes about, looks like six, seven floors were taken out, and there's more oh, explosions there's, oh, right now. Hold on, people are running. Hold, hold on. on just a moment. We've got an explosion inside. The building's that... exploding right now. you got people running up the street. Okay. Hold on, I'll tell you what's going on. Okay, just uh, put, put Winston on pause there for just a moment. Okay, while the he... whole building just exploded some more. The whole top part. Okay. The building's still intact. People are running up the streets. Uh, am I still connected? Winston, this would support probably what Libby and you both said, that perhaps the fuselage was in the building that would cause a second explosion such as that. Well, that's what just happened then. That would, that certainly... Yeah, people are running up. Um, I, we are getting word that perhaps... Okay, hold on. The, the people here are, everybody's panicking. Keep in mind that the first plane hit about 8.48 a.m., so there had to already be a number of people at work inside the World Trade Center. We're going to go right now bring in Rose Arce, one of our producers here at CNN. She's with us on the phone and has with her a number of people who have escaped the building. Rose. Yes, there's a huge crowd. I'd say about hundreds of people on the streets that come from south to north. I've been really thousands of people that have been running from inside these buildings. You know, it's a very heavily trafficked area in downtown the World Trade Center. Many of them were inside the building when they felt the explosion. And they say there was just pandemonium. There was no warning, no alarms, no anything. Everyone just raced from their desks, 
ran downstairs, and now there's a steady stream of folks running away from the building. Some people saying that they're fearing there'll be another explosion, and when they saw the second plane, convinced that this was dangerous, there's, there's just an absolute flood of folks escaping downtown Manhattan right now. And Rose, do you have anybody with you that could um, talk about being inside the World Trade Center when this happened? Right now, honestly, there are scores of people that are literally running by me. There's debris on the, on the base of the building that has continued to fall. As, you know, even as, as far as a block away from the building. And what's happened is that everyone has, has, seems to have figured out that there's ongoing danger and there's just a stream of folks running as quickly as they can uptown away from, the, from this. Understandably. What about rescue efforts? I would imagine there's still a number of people inside those buildings. Well, right now what you see is there's, there's uh, trucks trying to get through and, and people have actually jumped from the crowd and are trying to help direct traffic to try to get emergency vehicles there. There's no traffic going in the other direction, but because of the flow of people, it looks like some emergency vehicles are actually having trouble getting to mm. the scene. And from where you're standing, is there any kind of command center, any place that people are being directed toward? Right now, what there is is there's a crush of, of emergency vehicles and rescue vehicles, but they don't seem to be quite organized in any direction. Um, there's fire department vehicles on the one side where you see the smoke coming out of the building. On the other hand, you see police groups of police officers trying to organize the crowd and in more orderly fashion. I think there's, there seems to be some fear on their part that such a huge crowd of people might injure each other on the way, on the way out. All right, Rose Arce on the ground there near the World Trade Center. We continue our coverage live with the live pictures as we go. And we're just now getting word again from the Associated Press now saying that the crash of these two aircraft into the towers of the World Trade Center in New York appear to be an act of terrorism. This they are quoting a U.S. official. They did not say which department of this, uh, or this U.S. official was speaking from or the authority this, this official was actually carrying at this particular point. But they're saying that a U.S. official is now saying to the Associated Press, it is official, well, he is saying at least, that these two aircraft crashes we've seen into each of the towers of the World Trade Center are the act of terrorism. We're just getting word now that President Bush is going to be coming out and he's going to have comments uh, momentarily. We understand we're keeping an eye on the picture from Sarasota. He's going to be returning to Washington almost immediately, we understand. Darren? And in fact, as you mentioned, President Bush is in Florida today. We're supposed to have an education event just minutes from now. That has been canceled. Our Major Garrett is traveling with the President. Major, maybe you can tell us a little bit more on the President's immediate plans. Good morning, Darren. Uh, President Bush, uh, as you said, will make a statement here at Emma E. Booker Elementary School in Sarasota on the catastrophe at the Twin Towers in New York. Following that statement, the President will board Air Force One and return immediately to Washington. We are told by White House officials traveling with the President in Sarasota that he was notified either shortly before 9 a.m. or just shortly after. We don't have an exact moment of the notification of the president we believe his chief of staff andrew card told him of the uh, events in new york city the president has been monitoring them as best as he can he was at one moment this morning sitting reading a book to some of the elementary school children here as scheduled reporters asked him if he was aware of the situation in new york he nodded a bit gravely and said he would have something to say about that shortly we are expecting that statement any moment now I can tell you here in Sarasota with those traveling with the president, they are trying to sift through all of the amazing and terrifying uh, both pictures and details as they can uh, uh, get them from New York City, but no confirmation here from White House officials about what this in fact is, whether it's accident or terrorism. They are trying to gather information as best they can, give it to the president, and trying to keep uh, things on a very calm and even keel if possible. And on that note, Major, it sounds like that exchange of questions with the president came at what would be a sensitive time if he was sitting in front of a bunch of school children and not wanting to scare the children. Well, precisely. And uh, the, the president uh, has a way of uh, letting reporters know that it's either an appropriate time or an inappropriate time to take questions. He does that in many different environments, many different situations. Clearly this morning with the, with the crowd of children, he wanted to keep an even keel, keep the situation under control as best as possible. He just nodded and said, I'm... Uh, we'll talk about this later. Right. So once again, we do expect to hear from the president soon a time frame on that. Uh, within the next 10 minutes or so, again, things are very much in flux, things are a bit confused. The event here, uh, which was scheduled to talk about education reform, talk about the importance of reading, that has been scrubbed, and the president is trying to uh, gather whatever information, all the information he can from various White House sources, 
make a statement and then uh, get aboard Air Force One, get back to Washington just as soon as he can. Major Garrett traveling with the president in Sarasota, Florida. Major, thank you very much. And of course, as soon as the president begins to speak, you'll see those comments live here on CNN. Leon. I want to uh, just inform you that uh, we just got in word, uh, according to Reuters News Service, uh, trading on this markets in New York have been postponed indefinitely. And uh, we will try to keep an eye on that, but can't expect that to happen, get underway anytime soon. But, but we just heard our Major Garrett mention moments ago this investigation. We're just now getting reports here. The Associated Press saying that U.S. officials are saying this is an act of terrorism. Let's go now to our David Enzor, who's on the phone right now, and give us some more information on what may be at stake there. David. Well, Leon, I, I can just tell you uh, that uh, U.S. officials are also telling me uh, that uh, this is clearly not an accident in their view, and they do believe that terrorism is at the root of this. Uh, they believe this is a terrorist act. Uh, however, uh, they have very little other information. Obviously, uh, law enforcement agencies will be taking the lead on this, trying to find out who these, okay. uh, uh, who was flying the planes, whether they had in fact been uh, uh, turned away from their regular flights, and so on. So, very little information. David, we're gonna, David, we're going to have to cut you off. President Bush is speaking. I. Um, Unfortunately, we'll be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at uh, Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now, if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. Emotional President Bush there speaking in Sarasota, Florida, cutting short his stop there, saying that uh, an apparent terrorist attack has occurred on U.S. soil. They're mentioning the two planes that have crashed into the World Trade Center this morning. It says a full-scale investigation is underway to hunt down those responsible for this, saying terrorism will not stand. And uh, Leon, on the heels of the president's remarks, CNN has learned that at least one of the planes involved in this hit on the World Trade Center was an American Airlines 767, a Boeing aircraft that took off from Boston. What happened to that airplane as it took off from Boston and how it ended up at the World Trade Center? Our details will have to fill in as we go. But uh, let's go ahead and bring in our David Ensor. David, um, you were saying before uh, we interrupted you for the president's remarks. Well, unfortunately, the, the, the amount of detail that the officials who are tracking this have is pretty sketchy at this point. But uh, I was just saying that officials are calling this a, an act of terrorism. They're saying that's clearly what it is, clearly not an accident. Uh, and and uh, law enforcement agencies, the FBI and others, will be taking the lead on this, officials say. And clearly, obviously, they will first try to uh, ascertain who did this. Uh, what nationality are they? What's, what's behind this? That's really, really all I can say. There, there are um, uh, several places around the government. There are uh, groups of officials gathering and setting up crisis centers to try and deal with the flow of information on this, which, as you can imagine, uh, is going to be considerable as the day progresses. And so far, as far as we know, no one has been taken responsibility for this. Uh, there have been no claims of responsibility, and U.S. intelligence officials say they had uh, no warning of anything like this uh, coming along. All right, David Ensor, thank you for joining us on the phone. Once again, you can see that information at the bottom of your screen. Two different planes have flown into the World Trade Center within the last hour. One plane was an American Airlines Boeing 767 from Boston in terms of how many people were on board that plane and um, if it was forcibly taken from Boston into New York, we still have yet to learn. Right, we're joined now on the telephone by the former uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency Director James Lee Witt. Uh, Director Witt, uh, you're watching these pictures with us this morning. You, your comments. Well, it's just horrible. Um, there's no doubt. I, I, I did see the one plane flying into the building. It's just unbelievable, something like this. But, you know, we've been... Uh, 
you know, for several years now, we've been working on terrorist type events, and you know, and this is um, uh, apparently one of those events that I do not know yet, but apparently it could be. And, and right now, I know I, f I really feel for those families, and and uh, but Richie and uh, the New York Emergency Management, the state of New York, and um, and I know they're very busy right now in the law and the FBI and law enforcement, but this is one of those crisis management as uh, well as a uh, consequence management situation that they're going to have to be dealing with. You know, the, the first thing this calls to mind to many of us who have been here to cover these events was the World Trade Center bombing back in, uh, back was in 96 when that bombing had occurred? Yes. And you were director of FEMA at that particular time since then. What, has, has there been a plan put in place to, for something like this, to recover from this, or to actually to, to go through the exercises necessary to get people out and, and, and to recover from it? Well, they have a very good plan in place, and uh, for uh, even events, uh, you know, not as this. I don't think air. I don't know if they put a plan in place for airline crashing into it, but I know they take every scenario they could think of and try to deal with uh, a plan that will help them respond the, in the most effective way. And uh, you know, we even practice uh, airplanes flying into igloos. You know, in uh, and at some of the arsenals uh, around the United States. So you try to practice for everything you can think of and hope for the best and that you can be able to respond and, and hope none of this happens. But did, well, on that note, then, did you run, how many, did you run any kinds of tests at all or, or any kinds of, I don't know, theoretical tests or computer tests or anything on something like this? Uh, I'm not, we didn't. I'm not sure if New York, uh, New York City did. Uh, I'm sure they did. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can't, uh, you know, you, how can you stop something like this without having an anti-aircraft gun sitting on top of buildings, you know? Yeah. You yeah. just can't, you just, you can prepare the best you can be, and that's all you can do. And But uh, I'm sure that they've got everything in place and doing, uh, they always do an excellent job up there in New York. Director Witt, Director James Lee Witt, uh, former director of FEMA, we thank you very much for your time this morning. We're going to be talking with you later on. Darren. As we continue our coverage, our Aaron Brown uh, in New York City joining us now. Aaron, we can see over your uh, left shoulder there the, the building still smoldering of the World Trade Center. Well, it is uh, a grotesque sight to look at from about 30 blocks away from where we are. For those of you just uh, joining us, let's just briefly recap what we know. About an hour ago, about uh, 845 Eastern Time, one plane crashed into uh, the tower, the World Trade Center tower on the right, the first of those towers that you can see behind me. Uh, and then about a half hour later, uh, a second plane crashed into uh, the tower number two. That's the one to the left, uh, where the darker smoke is billowing out right now. Um, we have reports, CNN has been told that one of the planes was an American Airlines 767 that had been hijacked from Boston. Uh, we don't know if that was the first or the second plane that hit the tower, but we do, we do know uh, that, uh, that it was a 767 American Airlines jet, at least that's what CNN has been told by sources so far this morning. We also have reports of, uh, of a thousand injuries that is unconfirmed, and we always remind you in moments like these that as these initial reports come in, it is very early. I can tell you have driving in, it is extraordinarily chaotic on the west side of New York. Uh, it is the kind of situation where numbers change, where situations change, but this is the information we have now, that there are at least a thousand injuries, and we're working on that, as you can see, the smoke billowing out of the Trade Center. Um, we, in Sarasota, uh, Florida now, Major Garrett joins us. Major, what are you being told? Hello. President Bush has notified and talked, rather, to Vice President Cheney. He has talked to the FBI Director Robert Mueller, and he has also spoken with the Governor of New York, Governor Pataki, about this catastrophe. The President will convene a national security meeting upon his arrival back at Washington. Those are the four pieces of information we have gathered here in the moment since I just spoke to you on the telephone. The President, as we just saw a few moments ago, identifying this as an apparent act of terrorism against the United States, said there will be a full investigation. The entire apparatus of the United States government, FBI, national security, CIA, the vice president, who you may remember, was placed in charge of a domestic terrorism study group within the White House to monitor and develop plans to deal with a catastrophe of just this kind. All those 
Parts of the government have been mobilized. The president, the president is uh, heading back to Washington very soon. Here is what the president said about this catastrophe of the Twin Towers in New York just a few moments ago here at a Sarasota Elementary School. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. The president was first notified about the situation in New York by National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice. Then the second notification updating him with more details on the situation came from his chief of staff, Andrew Card, who's traveling with the president here in Sarasota. The day was supposed to talk about education reform, but the president is scrubbing all of those plans, marshalling all the resources of the federal government, talking with his aides as he can, and preparing to fly back to Washington to again, as we said, convene a National Security Council meeting. Back to you. Uh, Major, before you get away, and I apologize if you, if I'm asking you to repeat something, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Uh, do we know exactly where the president was when he was told? He was just arriving here in Sarasota at Emma E. Booker Elementary School. He had taken an early morning jog this morning in Sarasota, had just arrived here with a presidential motorcade. Then the spectacular, horrific pictures began appearing on television sets here at the elementary school. The president received a telephone call from Condoleezza Rice, national security advisor. Then he received an update from his chief of staff, Andrew Card, traveling with him. Then it was made clear to the press traveling with the president he would make a statement. Shortly before that statement, he was actually sitting down with some children here at the elementary school, reading them a book. Reporters asked him if he knew about the situation of the Twin Towers. He nodded and said he would talk about it momentarily. In fact, he did. We just heard the president's statement declaring Major, this an apparent act of terrorism. Yes, Aaron. Let, let me interrupt you here. Senator Ted Kennedy is uh, Senator Kennedy is speaking in Washington as again. One of the planes was hijacked from Boston. Uh, perhaps we can hear the senator now. Uh, we underline the point that it is uh, postponed. We are not going to see the business of America uh, deferred because of terrorism, uh, whether it's in education or in any area of uh, public uh, policy. We're looking forward to hearing uh, from the, uh, the First Lady <coughs> on a subject matter which is of central concern to uh, all families in this uh, country and because of her experience and her leadership, uh, this committee and the Congress and the American people would have benefited greatly uh, from her comments. And we will look forward to an early... Senator Ted Kennedy in Washington. Chris Plan, a CNN producer, is at the Pentagon where there is a significant fire. Chris, you're on the phone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you just fine. Tell me what you know. Well, uh, arriving at the Pentagon a short time ago, uh, there was a uh, huge plume of smoke which continues to rise from the west side of the Pentagon over in the area where there is a uh, helicopter landing zone. It's along Route 27 if you're looking at maps of the area. The building is currently being evacuated and uh, police and emergency units are of course responding from uh, all around the building. Uh, and from the local Arlington County Fire Department. The plume of smoke is, uh, is enormous. It's a couple of hundred yards across at its base. It is billowing into the sky hundreds of yards. It's impossible for me to say from this side of the building whether the building itself is uh, on fire or up in flames or exactly what caused this. I did not hear an explosion, uh, but there is certainly a very, very significant fire in this enormous office building on the west front. Uh, the building is being evacuated. The Defense Prote Protective Service officers, the police force for the Pentagon, are uh, on a very tight string right now. As I arrived, okay. I was Chris, held at gunpoint. 
Chris, yes. let, me, let me interrupt you for a second. Just hang on. Don't go anywhere. We're getting reports now that uh, the White House is being evacuated as well. We don't know precisely what, uh, what is caused that decision to be made, uh, whether that is precautionary, whether something has happened at the White House. Again, the president is in Florida this morning, so the president is not in any danger. But the White House, of course, is fully operational, whether the president is there or not. And we have reports that the White House is being evacuated. Uh, getting back to Chris in a moment, we also have reports now from uh, Chris Plant on the scene that the Pentagon is being evacuated as well. All of this coming on the heels of a large fire at the Pentagon, and we can't tell you at this moment whether that fire is inside the Pentagon building itself or on the ground to the Pentagon. And these two planes that you can see behind us that hit the World Trade Center, uh, that's Washington, the old executive office building, I believe, and you can see the plume of smoke behind it, which we will assume until we're told otherwise that that's the fire at the Pentagon. I believe that's correct. Uh, as you look now at Washington. So we've got uh, a major fire at the Pentagon and the Pentagon being evacuated, the White House being evacuated, and we don't know precisely the circumstances there, what caused that decision. And we have these two enormous uh, explosions at the World Trade Center here in New York where two planes slammed into the buildings. We are also getting reports now that there is a fire on the mall in Washington, that part of the Capitol that runs uh, essentially from the Capitol to the White House in kind of a straight line going uh, up Washington, D.C., and we have reports of a fire there. Uh, this, what you're looking at now is Washington, at least if I can see the monitor in front of me. It's a little tricky from where we are, but that looks to me like the old executive office building, and then in back of it you see the large plume of smoke. Here in New York, uh, sirens everywhere, people out on the streets staring at this uh, grotesque scene of the World Trade Center buildings. It was in February of 93, if memory serves me correctly, that there was an attack, a terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. Bomb exploded in the garage of the Trade Center on that day in February of 93. Uh, here we are in the year 2001 and w what appears to be deliberate attacks on the World Trade Center and then we have these two reports out of Washington, the fire at the Pentagon. Chris Plant is still uh, on the phone, I do believe. Um, and right, we'll get to hit him in a second. Greta Van Susteren is at National Airport in Washington. Greta, what are you hearing? Uh, I just got off my plane. I was headed to New York. Planes were stalled. I'm at National Airport on the parking lot. I heard a huge noise. I looked over in the direction of the Pentagon. There's a huge plume of smoke coming from that area. I can't verify it's the Pentagon because there are these buildings in the way. You see particles coming down in the air, some sort of white particles. I can't tell what that is. I'd heard a noise slightly before I'd seen the smoke. I don't know if it's an airplane or if it's a bomb, but it was certainly something. And obviously there's a terrific fire going on. Um, the skies are clear here except for the tremendous amount of smoke that's coming from there. Lots of sirens from all different directions and, of course, a lot of uncertainty here at National Airport. Uh, Greta, thank you. Uh, I want to just again recap as we pick up small pieces of information along the way. Associated Press is reporting that a plane, it was a plane that crashed at the Pentagon and the Pentagon is being evacuated. There is a large fire there and that is the smoke you see in the shot that you are looking at now. Whether that fire is in the building itself or outside we have not yet confirmed. There is a fire on the mall in Washington. The, ca the cause of the fire on the mall in Washington, we cannot yet tell you. We can tell you that the White House has been evacuated, and we can tell you that two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center in New York. All of this began uh, just a little more than an hour ago at about 8.45 Eastern time. Chris Plant, tell me what you've learned since we last talked. Well, in speaking to people uh, here at, uh, at the Pentagon as they're being evacuated, from the building, I am told by several people that there was, in fact, an explosion. I was told by one uh, witness, uh, an Air Force enlisted, uh, senior enlisted man, that he was outside when it occurred. He said that he saw a helicopter circle the building. He said that it appeared to be a U.S. military helicopter and that it disappeared behind the building where the helicopter landing zone is. Excuse me. <clears throat> and that he then saw a fireball uh, go into the sky. Uh, I'm attempting to make my way around to that side of the building in my car right now uh, to see if I can get uh, 
a better uh, visual perspective on the scene on that side of the building, but I can tell you that security has certainly clamped down. The U.S. Park Police and other federal law enforcement uh, department has arrived in force on the scene. There is a Park Police helicopter overhead. Uh, every car that arrives at the gate uh, where I was located was being stopped by officers at gunpoint. Everyone is being forced out of their vehicles as they arrive at the Pentagon. It's a very tense situation, obviously, uh, but initial reports from witnesses indicate that uh, there was, in fact, a helicopter circling the building. Uh, contrary to uh, what the AP reported, according to the witnesses I've spoken to anyway, uh, and that this helicopter disappeared behind the building and that there was then an explosion. Uh, that's about all I have from here. Okay, l let's do this, Chris. Why don't you continue reporting, and we'll pass along a couple of other things that we're picking up along the way. Uh, trading at the New York Stock Exchange. The Stock Exchange, as many of you probably know, but some of you don't, is in that part of Lower Manhattan, not quite far as far down as the Trade Center, but it is in that part of Lower Manhattan, and trading has been suspended there. Bridges and tunnels coming into New York have been closed. Uh, that will create a whole different set of problems. We are also being told that the FAA has suspended takeoffs and landings and I want to make sure I get this right, guys, that in all, uh, at all airports around the country, uh, so uh, air travel in this country has come to a halt this morning as clearly uh, people are trying, people in government, people, police forces, fire departments are trying to figure out what exactly is going on. Uh, there are several now incidents that look for all that we can tell to be a major terrorist attack here in the United States. So all airports all across the country are closed. All bridges and tunnels coming into Manhattan are closed. The Pentagon has been evacuated or is being evacuated. The White House is being evacuated. The president who is in Sarasota today uh, to make a speech on education has spoken briefly to cameras and is uh, will shortly make his way back to Washington. They are checking out uh, Air Force One now. Let's go uh, to Atlanta. Chad Myers can talk to us a bit about the air traffic problems. Chad, are you there? Aaron, yes, um, all of the airports across the country have been shut down. We started with Zone New York, which includes Islip, Newark, JFK, LaGuardia, all the way down to Philadelphia, and then IAH, Houston, and then San Francisco, and then LA. They were just falling like a deck of cards, and then all of a sudden the FAH just said, we're shutting down everything. All flights have been canceled and for another seven hours, which is about five o'clock Eastern time, and then we'll reignite there. We'll take a look what's going on after that. The probability of extension, as they call that, is high, which means even after 5 o'clock, the airports may still be shut down. We'll keep watching it for you here from Atlanta. Um, Chad, just, uh, and if you don't know, just say you don't know. Do you, can, can you recall a situation where every airport in the country had been shut down? Absolutely not, except in wartime, of course, uh, Aaron, and obviously this is uh, not that. But uh, with all the airports, that, as they were going down from west to east, we could see them. And then we could eventually see from New York. And then they canceled Boston as we got the report that the first flight or one of the possible hijack flights did come out of Boston. And then it just started going down from there. But never, ever before have we ever seen all of the airports shut down like this, not this quickly. Chad, thank you. Stay on this for a while. We'll get back to you. We know that many people are... Uh, just joining us. We want to get everyone on the same page before we move on. So one more time, let's go through the sequence of events. At about 8.45 Eastern Time, a plane crashed into uh, the foremost of those towers that are the World, the world Trade Center. Uh, that's uh, Air Force One you see in Florida, the president on board. Uh, obviously extraordinary security around the plane before the president got on and the president is heading back to Washington. A short time ago the president made a statement. He said terrorism against our nation will not stand. The government will hunt down those responsible. Mr. Bush said today we've had a national tragedy. Two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on the country. And we also have a report now that the, it was a plane that crashed into the Pentagon, and we have a large 
fire at the Pentagon. The Pentagon is being evacuated as we speak now. The White House has been evacuated as well. CNN's John King joins us on the phone. John. Aaron, I'm standing in Lafayette Park directly across from the White House, perhaps about 200 yards from the White House residence itself. The Secret Service has pushed most people all the way back to the other side of the park, trying to avoid having that done to me at the moment. Just moments ago, they started slowly evacuating the White House about 30 minutes ago, and then in the last five minutes, people have come running out of the White House and the old executive office building, the build, which is the office building right directly across from the White House. About 10 minutes ago, there was a white jet circling overhead, now, you generally don't see planes in the area over the White House. That is restricted airspace. No reason to believe that this jet was there for any nefarious purposes, but the Secret Service was very concerned, pointing up at the jet in the sky. It is out of sight now, best we can tell, but they've evacuated the entire White House staff and the old executive office, as well as some townhouses that are government offices. Many of our viewers might know Blair House, where other international leaders stay when they are in Washington. That block of townhouses has been evacuated as well, and they are pushing us now back toward H Street, which is the next main street to the north from Pennsylvania Avenue across from the White House. Okay, John, hang on one second. We're also getting reports at the Capitol, the Treasury Building also being evacuated. John, is this evacuation from the White House was it orderly? Did it seem panicky? How would you characterize it? It started off as orderly, much like we get when there are occasional bomb scares near the White House. But then, again, in the last 10 minutes or so, the people who came out the last Several hundred I saw leaving the grounds were told and ordered by the Secret Service to run. They were running through the gates. These are, of course, professionals in business suits. I'm also told that prior to that, and we don't know the current situation, that the vice president and other administration officials on the scene were meeting in the White House Situation Room, which is in the basement of the White House. Whether they have stayed on the complex or not is unknown to us at this moment. I spoke to an administration official shortly after the president delivered his statement. who said, obviously, the operating assumption here is terrorism. The initial assumption this official said was that this had something to do, or at least they were looking into any possible connections with Osama bin Laden. The administration recently released a warning that they thought Osama bin Laden might strike out against U.S. targets. Uh, just to add, John, a bit to what you've been saying, we're getting a report from Associated Press now that the White House was evacuated after the Secret Service received what AP is describing as a credible, <coughs> excuse me, a credible threat of a terrorist attack against the White House itself. Um, and I, I expect you'll be checking that out. We'll try and confirm that, but that's what AP is reporting right now. Again, this all began about an hour and 15 minutes ago here in Lower Manhattan when the first of two planes crashed in to the first of the two towers behind me at the World Trade Center, and you can see the smoke billowing out of the, of the front tower now, and then about a half an hour later, just as uh, emergency crews were converging on the scene, as uh, eyewitnesses were gathering on the street corners, a second plane drove in too. And you can see that plane coming around the building right now in this tape. And there you can see the hit as it comes through what looked to me at least, and this is the first time I've seen that tape, come through the back side of the tower. I guess that would be the south side of the tower. And, and then the smoke and flame coming out the front side. Um, again, that was about a half hour after the first attack, which was at about 8.45. Look, you want to be careful here. We don't want to get too far ahead of this, but obviously this has all the appearances of an extraordinarily well-coordinated and devastating terrorist attack here in the United States. Uh, certainly nothing like it since Oklahoma City and nothing like it here in New York since the terrorist attack on the same World Trade Center buildings in February of 1993. Uh, at the Pentagon, a plane or a helicopter has crashed apparently as part of whatever this operation has been. And uh, is, uh, Jamie McIntyre is there. Jamie, what are you hearing? Well, the, uh, Aaron, the, uh, there is a lot of confusion here at the Pentagon. It appears that uh, something hit uh, the Pentagon on the outside of the fifth corridor, uh, on the Army corridor. Several Army officers I talked to reported hearing a, a big explosion, seeing shards of metal uh, uh, coming past their window. The Pentagon has been evacuated. Uh, emergency services personnel were rushing to reports of several people trapped in the building. Most of the building's 24,000 people are outside of the building or in the center courtyard. 
uh, as the emergency teams try to sort out what has happened here. There is, of course, uh, thick black smoke billowing from the scene. Uh, there is a lot of confusion. The Defense Protective Service, which is the police force here in the Pentagon, has been urging people to get out of the building uh, and move away from the scene so they can handle the uh, emergency situation. Again, it appears that an aircraft of some sort did hit the side of the Pentagon, the, the west front, which uh, faces sort of toward Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, it's a uh, corridor where a lot of Army offices are located. Wow. And oh. some Jamie, people were... Jamie, I need you to stop for a second. There has just been a huge explosion. We can see uh, a billowing smoke rising. And I can't, I'll, I'll tell you that I can't see that second tower, but y there was a cascade of sparks and fire. And now this, it looks almost like a mushroom cloud explosion, this huge billowing smoke in the second tower. This was the second of the two towers hit. And I, you know, I cannot see behind that smoke, obviously, as you can either. The first tower in front has not changed. And we see this extraordinarily and frightening scene behind us of this second tower now just encased in smoke. What is behind it, we're, I, I cannot tell you. But just look at that. That is about as frightening a scene as you will ever see. Again, this is going on now in two cities. We have a report that uh, there is a fire at the State Department as well, and that is being evacuated. So we've got fires at the Pentagon evacuated, the State Department evacuated, the White House evacuated on the basis of what the Secret Service describes as a, as a credible terrorist threat. We have two explosions, two planes hitting the World Trade Center here in New York, and what this second explosion was that took place about a part of the south that would be the south tower has apparently collapsed we don't know if that was from the impact of this first plane that hit it or whether something else has happened there we'll work on that our washington bureau chief frank Cesno is on the phone frank what are you hearing aaron i just drove past the pentagon across the 14th street bridge which is now choked with traffic we're beginning to hear uh, emergency sirens and rescue personnel uh, uh, standing out across Washington. There is a gigantic black billowing cloud of smoke that is, that is rising over the Pentagon. You heard Jamie McIntyre a moment ago describe where that uh, was coming from. I can also tell you that local radio, in addition to talking about evacuations, as we've heard at the Pentagon, the White House is reporting that the what? Capitol building has been evacuated and the Treasury Department has been evacuated. Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, is exceptionally tense and uh, clearly taking steps as if it is virtually under siege here. We don't know specifically, as you've as you said, uh, what has taken place at the Pentagon, but this is very serious, striking at the heart of the national government. And as John King was explaining, Frank, the White House Frank, it's Aaron. I, I need to interrupt you for a second. Uh, again, there has been a second explosion. Uh, here in uh, Manhattan at the, at the Trade Center, we are getting reports that a part of the tower, the second tower, the one a, a bit further to the south of us, uh, has collapsed. We are checking on that. We are also told that the Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated. And what I can't tell you on that is whether there was something specific that happened there, whether there was an attack on that building yet, we're checking that out, or whether there was a warning, whether there was a threat of some sort, or whether that is simply precautionary. What we can tell you is that it just in the last several minutes here, two or three minutes, a second or third, I guess technically, extraordinary event has happened here in lower Manhattan. You can see this extraordinary plume of smoke uh, that is, or was, at least, the second tower of the World Trade Center. Uh, oh, perhaps three, four minutes ago, you could, from where we were standing, see that second building that is just a bit to the south of the first building, uh, but you can't see it anymore. It is covered with smoke, a large plume of smoke also coming still from the first tower where the first plane hit at about 845. Um, We can, by the way, if we can uh, uh, cue the tape, we can show you that second attack 
uh, or at least the second explosion in the Trade Center that occurred at about 9.15 Eastern Time. As you can imagine, lower, there you can see to the right of your screen a plane coming in. We do have a report of a hijacked American Airlines plane. It comes into the south side and then boom, you can see the fire coming out the front or the north side of the building. I guess that'd be the northeast side of the building. And then just in the last several minutes, there has been a second explosion, or at least perhaps not an explosion, perhaps part of the building simply collapsed. And that's what we saw, and that's what we're looking at as uh, smoke now just covers lower Manhattan, almost as far to the end of uh, Manhattan Island as you can get is where the trade centers are. The, the trade, or the Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated, and we continue to check on the circumstances there. The Pentagon, the State Department, and the White House have been evacuated in Washington as well. The President has said, we can show you now what happened just a few moments ago at the Trade Center. Watch the building to the left, to the, to the back of those two buildings. This is just a few minutes ago. We don't know if something happened, another explosion, or if the building was so weakened it just collapsed. But um, we have a, one of our producers on the phone, and I didn't get the name, so why, do, uh, why don't we just go ahead? Are you there? Yeah, this is Rose Arce calling from New York. Rose, tell me what you know. Just a few minutes ago, we saw there's a portion of the building where the first plane struck that seemed to be buckling inside itself, almost as if the top of the building was going to fall. Shortly after that, two people, it's hard to tell whether they were being pushed or they, they physically approached themselves. The sort of river side of the building would be the west side of the building and appeared to jump from the top floors, just under where you seeing the smoke and fire. That is extraordinary. The South Tower, the World Trade Center, has collapsed. Again, tell me, how long ago was it that you saw this? This must have been about, about five minutes ago. And prior to that, you could see heads popping out of windows right beneath where that big gaping hole is. So there appeared to be people alive right below where the crash point was and were trying to find some way out of there. And just as the thing started to buckle, you saw them plummeting from, from that top floor. Right, and, and perhaps this is stating the obvious. We apologize for that. But obviously people were uh, already at work here uh, at the Trade Center when this happened. Uh, we don't know how many people uh, have been hurt in all of this. We have no idea at this point as you look at an aerial shot coming from the, I guess that would be coming from the south uh, of the Trade Center or what is at least the Trade Center behind those uh, huge plumes of smoke. All airports across the country, every airport in the United States has been shut down as the FAA and the government tries to figure out exactly what has happened, what is at risk, what is not, who is behind it. Are there more explosions, more attacks yet to come? Uh, here in New York, the trading on the New York Stock Exchange has been suspended, at least for now. All bridges and tunnels coming into the city have been shut down as police try and clear, uh, clear the way. We can tell you, as we were coming in uh, perhaps an hour ago, uh, there was a a convoy, I can't think of a better word, a convoy of fire and police trucks racing down the West Side Highway. And this is in the middle of rush hour. Obviously, every uh, available fire unit here in Manhattan has been brought to the Trade Center. Outside the White House, John King, our senior White House correspondent. John. Hello, Aaron. They have pushed us even further back away from the White House now, and there are more than a half dozen fire trucks, some of the Secret Service now patrolling the perimeter in Lafayette Park, which is directly across from the White House, have automatic rifles drawn to keep people away from the park, and they're policing back and forth. You can probably hear additional fire apparatus arriving on the scene. Uh, senior White House staffers who were evacuated, all they can tell us is that they were told that there was a credible threat on the White House as well, and that they were told to evacuate the premises. What we do not know is uh, whether or not the vice president and the national security team have stayed inside the White House Situation Room. We know that they were directing and monitoring operations from there as of just about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes ago. But the White House staff, the executive office building staff, and all the office buildings around, including the Treasury Department 
and some government and some non-government office buildings. People have been evacuated out into the street. And again, the Secret Service now putting up yellow police line tape and some of them patrolling Lafayette Park with automatic rifles, which is a scene quite extraordinary here across from the White House. Uh, John, um, tell us as best you can what the government's national security apparatus uh, will do right now. I mean, what, what do you guess is happening and where is it happening? Well, the, in the, I, I don't want to guess at all, but in the, from the White House Situation Room, a president or a vice president can direct a war, uh, can direct a full-scale world war. The White House Situation Room is where all information it is accessible to all information from the United States military, from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, from the Federal Aviation Administration in this case. The, the White House Situation Room is prepared just for situations like this, unfortunately, to be prepared in a time of crisis for the president to monitor incoming information and to direct any U.S. military or non-military emergency response. The White House Situation Room is a bomb shelter, for that matter. That part of the White House is a bomb shelter. Whether or not they have stayed in there is unclear. We know in the past that would be the routine. We just do not have a direct answer as yet, because the, most of the staff, is, if not all of the staff, has been evacuated from the premises. So I gather you're just not being you're not able to get any calls into the building right now, or at least not getting them answered at this point. Everybody's calls you get in, calls you get into the building are not answered at this point. Uh, and more fire apparatus showing up now as we speak. We saw most of the senior staff come out. We have not seen the national security staff that we would recognize anyway. But I should note there are other gates from the White House. We are on the north side. And this is a John, we, you're being drowned out by uh, by the sirens. Uh, Alan Dots Frank uh, of our bureau here in New York joins us on the phone. Alan, where are you? Hi, Alan. Um, my co our colleague Jennifer Westhoven uh, also just arrived. She was closer to the building. I'm just south of Canal Street, about 10 blocks north of World Trade Center. And just before 10 o'clock, parts of the building began peeling away. People started screaming. Jennifer tells me, because she was a little closer to the building, that uh, the police began yelling, run, run and uh, thousands of people started running away from the buildings as they were falling. That was, of course, followed by a onrush of avalanche, I mean, ambulances and uh, special police vehicles. Some people have told us, although I can't confirm this, that dozens of stories of the building have fallen away, maybe down as low as the 30th floor. Let's get in uh, and again, just uh, uh, because we lost a little bit at the beginning, where are you physically now? This is I'm the just south tape. of the Holland Tunnel in downtown Manhattan, perhaps 10 to 15 blocks north of the World Trade Center. Got it. And uh, the pictures that uh, our viewers are looking at, this was that collapse of uh, the South Tower Correct. just a few minutes ago here in New York. Yes, and moments after that, people began running toward us. Um, Jennifer West of them normally is at the stocking chain, was okay, only right. about five blocks away, and she saw the same thing. Uh, Alan, thank you. Let me go to uh, one of New York's deputy mayors, Randy, former deputy. to former deputy mayor. What are you hearing, Randy? Um, I, I only know what I have seen on television. Um, I've tried to talk to some H friends. Hand me the, here we go. Hand me the microphone. There we go. I, I only know what I have uh, heard on television. I've tried to speak to some friends, obviously. Phone lines, communication is difficult. Um, you know, nothing prepares you in life for a senseless tragedy like this one, but there is no city better prepared to deal with such emergency situations than New York City. So tell me, based on the plan, what is happening 30 blocks away? Sure. Um, Mayor Giuliani established early on an Office of Emergency Management to coordinate all the government agencies involved. So you have coordinated leadership of police, fire, health, all the city agencies uh, responding to that emergency. Um, they've planned for this kind of event. Unfortunately, this is not a unique occurrence in the life of New York City or our country. Uh, tragedies like well, this it may not happened. be a unique occurrence, but it is a very rare and extraordinary one. It is extraordinary, right. and therefore, therefore, um, in New York City, we have coordinated response, and they're responding now and providing every help that they can under these extraordinary circumstances. Hang on one second. We have a report now of an explosion on Capitol Hill, and we are checking that out. We have a report of a plane crashing at the Pentagon, the Pentagon being evacuated, uh, fire on the mall in Washington, the State Department evacuated, uh, and we have all flights shut down across the country as officials sort out what's happening here. Uh, Randy, back to you for a second. How much of the, well, if, if I recall this correctly, there is a 
what was called a bunker, the mayor's bunker, for these sorts of events in the Trade Center, correct? Um, there is an emergency management center at the Trade Center. Um, is that, clearly the mayor is not there. Um, I have not spoken with the mayor, okay. so I don't know his physical location, but I do know that that coordinated emergency response started immediately. Um, it's something that the city prepares for, and it's something that, you know, under these tragic circumstances, the city is doing everything it can to respond. How much of the plan changed after the World Trade Center bombing in 93? Well, there was no coordinated city response. There was no mayor's office of emergency management. Rudy Giuliani established that. Um, it's been one of the hallmarks of his tenure, and unfortunately, there are extraordinary circumstances like this one where that coordinated effort uh, has to come into play and is coming into play now. Why don't you, if you can, stay with us for a little bit. Sure. Uh, I suspect other questions are going to come up. Uh, I, I just uh, I want to go through again what we know here at this point and also point out some things that are not insignificant that we don't know. And one of the things we don't know is we do not now know how many fatalities there have been and how many injuries there are. Uh, we can only surmise that this has been catastrophic, uh, an event, a catastrophic event here in New York. Both Trade Center towers hit. One of them appears to have collapsed. How much of it collapsed? These are uh, very large. Uh, in any case, we cannot tell you how many uh, injuries, how many fatalities there have been. This is one of those situations that is extraordinarily chaotic, uh, even, even in the best of planning. I think it's fair to say that it is chaotic and officials are trying to do many things at one time. We have on the phone a pilot who witnessed these uh, planes crashing in to the World Trade Center. Uh, sir, can you tell me your name? John, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, John, tell me what you saw. Uh, this morning we were at uh, Midtown Manhattan in a, a 31st floor of a building facing south. We saw a 767 flying low down the center of Manhattan Island heading towards downtown Manhattan. At about uh, maybe 20 blocks north of the World Trade Center, we saw the plane veer to the left and fly directly into the north side of the South Tower. So this was the second uh, plane that hit the tower, correct? No, this was the first plane. This, Got it. This John was the 767. Got it. John, hang on. Kate Snow's on Capitol Hill. Uh, Kate, what can you tell us about the events there? Well, I'm a couple of blocks away from the Capitol right now. I can tell you that about a half hour ago, the Capitol building itself was evacuated. Um, it was a little bit chaotic. Everyone was running out of the building. People ran a couple of blocks away. We have now been pushed back by security. We're within two blocks of the Capitol. I did see myself a plane about a half hour ago circling over the Capitol. Now, whether that may have been an Air Force, a U.S. plane, it's, it's unclear. It, uh, but that seemed to be the reason, according to security guards that I talked with, for the evacuation of the Capitol. They had seen something or heard something suspicious. They've evacuated the Capitol and the surrounding buildings, the office buildings, at least on the House side, which is where I'm standing. There are three House office buildings. Those have also been evacuated. Uh, we're seeing members of Congress are walking by us here on the sidewalk. Um, I can also, you go ahead. Kate, I'm sorry, and if you've said this, I apologize, uh, and I apologize to viewers too. Uh, was there, to your knowledge, an explosion at the Capitol? No, sir, there was not. Uh, I, I cannot, I can see the Capitol from here. Everything looks to be fine. There was, however, Aaron, a, a sound about five minutes ago that sounded like some sort of explosion. Now, everything is in close proximity here in Washington. It could be that that may have been something that happened at the Pentagon. We're, we're not very clear on that. But okay. we did hear a sound. We heard something that sounded like a loud boom about five minutes ago. And Kate, you are again how far away from the, from the Capitol building itself? Uh, I'm standing on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is the main artery in Washington, D.C., and I'm about two blocks away from the Capitol. I did just see a spokesperson, by the way, for uh, the Speaker of the House, Mr. Hastert, Dennis Hastert, who tells me that uh, Mr. Hastert and other leaders have been evacuated into what he called a secure location. It's not clear where exactly they are, but they've been put somewhere secure. And because we can't see it at this point, just give me a sense of what it looks like there. Are there many, many people on the street? Uh, is yeah, it, this is... It, this Sidewalks, uh, people are calm. I think most people don't really know what's going on. Most people haven't been watching the news. 
Um, but the sidewalks are definitely full of people where, you know, normally at this time of the morning there wouldn't be that many people out here. And as I say, I've been passed by numerous uh, members of Congress and senators and staff, you know, who I know well who have been coming past me asking me what's going on. Okay, why don't you uh, hang around here and continue to report on that. Let me just, again, for those viewers who are joining us at about uh, 20 minutes uh, past 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, let me just briefly recap. Attacks on two American cities, New York and the Capitol in Washington. It began at about 8.45 Eastern Time when a plane crashed into the World Trade Center. That building, that was the building hit first. And then about a half an hour later, a second plane, and I'm not sure if we have the tape available. We, if we do, we'll show it to you. You can see the second plane coming in from the right side of your screen, going into the tower itself. This is an extraordinary and troubling piece of tape. The Justice Department is now being evacuated. The second attack on the Trade Center occurred about a half an hour or so after the first one. We have a report, CNN has been told, that an American Airlines 767 jet was hijacked out of Boston today. We don't know which of those two planes uh, hit the tower the second time. In the last 10 minutes or so, the South Tower, or at least a portion of the South Tower, has collapsed. It, uh, CNN's David Ensor joins us from Washington. David, where in the Capitol are you now? Well, Aaron, I'm, uh, I'm in our bureau, but I have on the telephone with me uh, Barbara, who is the wife of a friend of mine and who is an eyewitness to exactly what happened uh, at the Pentagon. Barbara, uh, can you hear me all right? Can you? Yes, I can hear you. Well, what exactly did you see? Uh, let's look at the Pentagon now as, as you describe uh, what exactly happened at the Pentagon this morning. As we were driving into town on 395, there was an exit. We were trying to get off the exit for the Memorial Bridge. Off to the left-hand side was a commercial plane that came in and was coming too fast and too low. And the next thing we saw was it go down below the side of the road, and we just saw the fire that came up after that. How large was the explosion? Uh, it was large. Was there sound as well? Um, that I can't, can't verify because the windows were up in the vehicle. Was it clear to you what had happened? Yes, definitely. So you believe it was a commercial airliner that was uh, hitting the Pentagon? Yes, and I'm not sure exactly where the Pentagon where it was in relationship to where the plane went down, you know, but they are relatively close to one another. Whether it hit any part of that Pentagon, I'm not sure. How low was the plane? When it was coming down? Yeah. It, it, it was coming down on uh, uh, less than a 45 degree angle and coming down toward the side of the um, 395 and when it came down it just missed the 395 and went down below it and then you saw the, the boom the um, fire come up from it were you able to see what kind of plane or what what airline it belonged to no I did not see what kind of an airline I just assumed because it was we were so close to the airport it was coming into land but it seemed awfully low to you yes and fast how big was the fireball um, I'm spatially challenged at times and it was pretty big what did you think was happening? Um, I know that, that that hit the ground and exploded. Were you frightened yourself? Yes. Yes, everybody stopped the cars and we all got out of it and so forth. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you talking to us. Aaron, back to you. David, thank you. CNN's David Ensor in Washington. CNN's Brian Palmer joins us on the phone from here in Manhattan. Brian, why don't you begin by telling me where you are? We are in front of the criminal courthouse after being pushed north slightly. We watched one of the towers of uh, the World Trade Center disappear from the skyline. It basically folded into itself in a plume of gray smoke. A crowd of thousands of people dashed up Broadway, followed by emergency services personnel. Um, that's all we know now. We're watching the plume of smoke uh, and, and debris just sort of waft, um, waft across uh, lower Manhattan. And people are lining up at this payphone behind me trying to find out uh, whether their relatives are safe. Well, let me just briefly go to Randy. Randy, just look out there and tell me what you're thinking when you see what now appears that at least part of one of the landmark buildings in this city, one of the most recognizable buildings in the country, is gone. It's 
the kind of moment you hope will never come. Uh, when you have been in government, when you care as much about this city and this country as a mayor like Rudy Giuliani does, it's a moment you pray will never come, and you pray for the families of anyone uh, affected by this tragedy. Uh, but as a city, you know, we come together and our emergency services provide every support they can in the face of such a senseless tragedy. It's an, it, it is an unbelievable scene. As Incredible. You you look down, I mean, we stand here at some point every day looking out at this city this time of year. It's extraordinarily pretty, and you see those two buildings high above lower Manhattan, and you look out there today, and you see this gaping hole in one of them, these plumes of smoke that continue to pour from the scene, and you, and you know that there's nothing behind. That second tower, or at least parts of it, are gone. We join now. Uh, one of our affiliates, WNYW, and their coverage here in New York. Well, we, we will uh, we'll try and uh, make that connection again uh, in two cities now, and there are a lot of pieces of information floating around. We need to, uh, to try and button up some of this. Uh, we had a report earlier that we now, uh, uh, we believe we could tell you is not correct, that there was an explosion at the Capitol. Uh, there was none as we, we now believe there was no explosion at the Capitol. There w Air travel routed to Canada has been f international flights going into, into the United States or into Canada, guys into the United States. International flights headed for the United States are being sent to Canada now to airports there as all air traffic in the United States has come to a halt. The FAA has shut down every airport in the country and to our knowledge and we're um, this is to the best of our memory that has never happened before. We're starting to get some uh, pictures of the scene uh, from the ground here in Manhattan. Uh, again, this all started about almost an hour and a half ago, I guess, a little more than that. Uh, this is a live picture of the scene now. Uh, we have crews on the ground and they've been trying to get tape back so we can show you the situation on the ground. As you can imagine, literally, uh, thousands of police, fire, rescue officials uh, have converged on the scene. Uh, there are, and we don't know how many, injured to be tended to, to be taken to hospitals. And we continue to check hospitals to find out uh, how many, the extent of injuries. We do not yet know how many fatalities. I've never heard of that before either, but I, I there is the scene. This is tape right. now from uh, WABC here in New York. Uh, their crew shot this picture as you see uh, fire trucks and firefighters, rescue personnel at the Trade Center about 30 blocks from where we are right now. And you can see these huge columns of smoke uh, coming off of the front tower and then a bit from the back. As you see, again, the crews working their way towards the, towards the tower themselves. It was 1993. Uh, that I suspect many of these same firefighters converged on these very same towers uh, after the bombing in the, in the garage level. Uh, help me with this, but I'm pretty sure it was in the garage, in the garage when, a, right, when a rider truck uh, came in and blew up in the garage. I'm not sure it was a rider truck, but a truck came in and uh, blew up in the garage. And that was in 1993. Center, we heard a big bang, and then we saw smoke coming out, and everybody started running out, and we saw the plane on the other side side of the building and there was smoke everywhere and people are jumping out the windows over there they're jumping out the windows i guess because they're trying to see themselves i don't know and and i don't know everybody just doesn't know where to go they won't let everything is blocked off you can't even they're telling us to get out but there's nowhere to go and then i heard that another plane hit and if you go over by that you can see the people jumping out the window they're jumping out the window right now oh my god all right ma'am thank you that is one of the witnesses to this extraordinary, these extraordinary events this morning here in New York. Um, again, 
I, and I know that for many of you, you've heard this a lot, but I, I, I think it's important as people join us as they do in moments like this, they are coming in all the time, that there have been attacks in two American cities, New York and in Washington. The trade centers here in New York have been hit by airplanes. In Washington, there, has, there is a large fire at the Pentagon. The Pentagon has been evacuated. And there, as you can see, perhaps the second tower, the front tower, the top portion of which is collapsing. Good Lord. There are no words. You can see large pieces of the building falling. You can see the smoke rising. You can see a portion of the, the, the side of the building now just being covered on the right side as I look at it covered in smoke. This is just a horrific scene and a horrific moment. The president who is in Florida today is en route back to the White House. He took off a short time ago. The White House itself has been evacuated on the basis of what the Secret Service says was a credible threat on the mansion itself. We believe now that we can say that both, that portions of both towers of the World Trade Center have collapsed, whether there were second explosions, that is to say explosions other than the planes hitting them that caused this to happen, we cannot tell you. Rose Arce, one of our CNN producers, is on the phone. Rose, what yes. do you got? I'm about a block away and there were several people that were hanging out the windows right below where the plane crashed when suddenly you saw the top of the building start to shake and people began leaping from the windows in the north side of the building. You saw two people at first plummet and then a third one and then the entire top of the building just blew up and splinters of debris are falling on the street. Where I am right now there's a thick plume of smoke and you can see crowds of people including emergency service workers and police officers running from the scene screaming and, and there's, a, there's a school nearby where there were kids in the schoolyard. That has been emptied out and they're running up the street now too. The, the whole sort of the neighborhood, I'd say several blocks up, is covered by this almost powdery smoke. Little tiny pieces of building you can see just floating in the, in the wind around it. It's almost as if like a huge cloud had, had kind of enveloped that part of lower Manhattan. Uh, it is just one of those awful moments that you need to look at for a minute or two to absorb exactly what has happened two of the most recognizable buildings in the city of New York have been attacked and both of them appear to have collapsed at least wow, in part. The second of the two collapses taking place just a moment or so ago, perhaps two or three minutes ago. There are also apparently coordinated attacks that have taken place in Washington on the Pentagon. The State Department has been evacuated. Just a few moments ago, as we said, and perhaps 20 minutes after the first tower collapsed, we turned around and saw what looked like sparks falling and then a, the top part of tower number one collapsing. These are shots from the ground of that scene. There have been frantic efforts to get people out of the tower now this was, again, this is tape, and you can see now whether that was an explosion or exactly what happened that caused that second tower to collapse. We cannot tell you. CNN's Kelly Wallace is on the phone with us. Kelly, where are you? What can you tell us? Aaron, I'm just about four blocks north of uh, the location of where the World Trade Center was standing. I was actually en route to the command center. Uh, people really staring in disbelief, and then as you saw, of course, the pictures watching that tower come down, people just couldn't believe their eyes. Police then pushing people immediately, people turning around and starting running ways, blocks away from, from the site. There is black smoke and uh, it's covering the air. You see people covering their mouths with some handkerchiefs and their coats and basically, uh, you know, it's an unbelievable scene. Most of the people have gone. The police are really pushing people away. There were a lot of people as I was making my way down here, Aaron, people just staring, getting on the cell phone, crying, recounting stories where they sort of you know, basically had seen what happened earlier today, trying to get in touch with loved ones, 
very concerned. And then, of course, some people watching the other tower come down earlier, and then a group of people then watching this other tower come down, a woman passing me covered in soot. Basically, the sky is just black. You can't even see down to lower Manhattan from the vantage point right now. The police have cleared off all these streets, pushing people away, police telling us that you have to get out of here to get out of here, pushing people away in, in garages. It's uh, an unbelievable scene. Aaron? You can see in this uh, shot our viewers can a helicopter shot coming across the harbor. Um, the Statue of Liberty prominent in the foreground and smoke and devastation and tragedy in the background. A tragedy that continues to unfold and one that still has many, many unanswered questions. We have a report now that a car bomb, a car bomb has exploded at the State Department. We are working to confirm that as well. Howard Safer is a former New York City police commissioner, the top police job here in the city, and he joins us for a few moments. Mr. Safer, what do you see? I when see you look at that, what do you see? I see something that's unimaginable. I see our, what is a police commissioner's worst nightmare. Uh, this is a situation uh, that obviously was well planned, well coordinated, and you know the loss of life that's taking place down there is just incredible and is going to strain the emergency services of this city to the hilt. Are, are, you, are you hearing any specific information? Are you hearing anything about the number of injuries, the number of fatalities, the number of people in that building, those buildings? Are you getting any of that information from well, I, I know there are, colleagues? I know there are 50,000 people who work in the World Trade Center. I, I know that every ambulance and every fire company in the city uh, and has been called in and dispatched there. Uh, it's unimaginable, but the loss of life is going to be huge. You're as familiar with the city's plan or plans for these kinds of uh, incidents as anyone in the city. Uh, in all honesty, does the plan cover the scope of what appears to have happened here? No, uh, we have an Office of Emergency Management. Uh, the plans for responding to a disaster are probably as good as any in the world, but nobody ever would contemplate that we would lose the two World Trade Centers and in this manner. Tell me what's happening there, would you guess, in the sense that what, what are police doing? What's the first thing that has to happen? Triage? The first thing is triage. The first thing is to identify who can be treated, who cannot be treated, uh, to get those ambulances to hospitals. Every hospital's emergency room is open and I'm sure working right now. And this is just a situation, it's like a war zone. And you have to logistically treat it like a war zone. You have to have your front lines, you have to have your support, and you have to have people who are constantly in there doing something. You know, I, I was also fire commissioner before I was police commissioner and you know it's no longer an issue unfortunately but a high-rise fire like that is almost impossible to fight at this point has, would, would you say that every police officer and there are what 40,000 yeah, 41, 41,000 41,000 police, 41, officers. police officers in the city have been called in oh every one of them I know every firefighter has been called and in. how many firefighters uh, there are 14,000 firefighters and I'm sure we'll be getting help with equipment uh, from our adjoining communities as well. I mean, this is a logistical exercise that makes the first attack on the wa World Trade Center, you know, relatively small. Because of its scope. Because of its scope. And, and its place in the building itself, that it was high up in the building, does that complicate things? It, it, it does. Once you get above the 10th floor in a fire, it's almost impossible to fight a high-rise fire above the 10th floor, except by sending firefighters up there and using hose stands, then you run into water pressure problems. It, I was just thinking about this, uh, not long after the World Trade Center bombing, uh, the engineer who designed the World Trade Center told me that the World Trade Center was designed to withstand a 707 direct impact. Well, obviously, that wasn't the case. It seems not. Um, we, we are getting reports and we are getting lots of reports and we want to be careful uh, to tell you when we have confirmed them and not. But we have a report that a 747 uh, is down in Pennsylvania and that remains unconfirmed at this point and so we will check on that. Uh, I want to get back to the former commissioner in a moment but again to briefly recap, you have uh, buildings in Washington now evacuated, the White House, the Pentagon, we have a report that there has been a collapse, a collapse at part of the Pentagon itself. 
there was an, ex an explosion. You can see the Pentagon on the right side of your screen, um, and that is a live picture as well. On the left side of your screen, you see the situation here in lower Manhattan in New York, where both of the World Trade Center towers have collapsed. This morning, as people were coming to work, all airports in the country have been shut down. International flights uh, that were heading this way are being diverted to Canada. The White House has been evacuated. The president was in Florida this morning, and he spoke briefly um, and said, in, in truth, the kinds of things and about the only kinds of things you can say in moments like this, that the government will do everything it can to hunt down whoever is responsible. This is uh, obviously an extraordinary crisis for the president and the first crisis, major crisis like it, that he has had to face compared to the, um, the plane that was uh, the forced down in China. Uh, that seems small right now compared to what's going on uh, here in New York and in Washington. And the president is headed back on Air Force One from Florida to the White House. The White House itself has been evacuated. Uh, we are trying now to figure out uh, where the relevant players in Washington are, where the vice president is, the national security team, where they are meeting. We are working very hard right now to find out what uh, both the FBI, what the CIA, what the Secret Service knows. Uh, it is chaotic now in two cities. You have major buildings that have been evacuated. It's very difficult, obviously, to get phone calls through as you look at the Pentagon. And I suspect we are also getting a report as you look at these pictures of the Pentagon. And I, in all honesty, suspect you see them a little more clearly than I do. But part of the building uh, appears to me, as I look at it, to have collapsed. That's the Pentagon. And those pictures are live at 1040 Eastern Time this morning. Uh, we have a report now of a fourth explosion at the Trade Center. And uh, Brian Palmer, uh, CNN correspondent, is as close as he can get to the area. Brian, what can you tell us? We are, in fact, as close as we can get uh, about, uh, I'm not going to give you an exact time frame, but several minutes ago we were standing in front of the United States Courthouse when we saw the second World Trade Center disappear from the skyline. It uh, collapsed before our eyes, again, in, in a plume of ash and, and debris. People rushed north. Uh, we had a New York City Police Department officer here with us who witnessed the first collapse, but uh, he actually had to dash off to duty. Um, we've been watching people uh, crying. Uh, some people had relatives uh, in, in the buildings. They were, they're not sure whether they are being, a, whether they've been evacuated, removed from the buildings or not. Was there, Brian, did it sound like there was an explosion before the second collapse or was the noise the collapse itself? Well, from our distance, we, uh, we, I was not able to distinguish between an explosion and the collapse. We were uh, several hundred yards away, but we clearly saw the building come down. I heard your report of a fourth explosion. I can't confirm that, but we, hear, we, we heard some boom and then the building fold in on itself. We are told, Brian, hang on, we are told that the Secretary of Defense is being uh, evacuated from the Pentagon. Uh, the Pentagon, a portion of the, of the Pentagon has collapsed uh, after, uh, and I'm, I'm not precisely sure on this, and I, I want to tell you when I'm not precisely sure, but apparently a plane or helicopter hit part of the Pentagon mm -hmm. itself. As you take a look at the pictures there, I must say every time we hear a plane coming up overhead, it gets a little, a little nervous uh, where we are. Um, whatever is happening and whoever is responsible, we have no way of knowing if it's played out yet or if it's just going on. So every time we hear a plane go by, we wonder what the situation is and where it is headed. That sound, we're, we're told by a person here, they believe that is a, a fighter jet. Federal office buildings around the country, is that correct? All over the country have been closed or just in Washington? Well, we, um, we were not allowed into um, the, fe uh, the federal courthouse here where CNN maintains a workspace. The officers just said we are, 
we're not allowing you in. I think that's a security pro precaution. Got it. Uh, stay with me a little bit. All federal office buildings now, all federal office buildings in Washington, D.C. Uh, are being evacuated. As we speak to you now, um, there are a variety of reports, and it's important to try and uh, and uh, put this in some kind of order, but the the most important things to tell you if you're just joined in is that a, what has all the makings of a, an extraordinary, extraordinarily well-planned terrorist attack on both Washington and New York has taken place this morning. The trade centers here in New York, the two World Trade Center towers have collapsed after being hit by a plane. Uh, Maria Hinosa joins us on the phone. She is uh, in New York, uh, down uh, near the building. Maria, what can you tell us? Well, I'm actually at St. Vincent's Hospital right now, right. where at about uh, 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes after the first explosion, they started seeing patients here. What I'm hearing, and I have not been in the ER yet, is that they have at least 100 patients or more that uh, several of those people were dealing with issues of smoke inhalation, many of them throwing up that um, there were several people who went directly to the operating room who are in very critical condition. Uh, outside the hospital, people are coming in, trying to help to donate blood. Essentially, everybody here at this hospital is, is in a state of shock. I, mean, I walked into the testing area, and the women here who usually just draw blood are also extraordinarily um, moved and shocked. They're moving in and out of the emergency room to try to help as many people as possible. Now outside a block, uh, about um, a block away from here, where you really had a bird's eye view of the two twin towers, which are the landmarks of New York City, um, the people stopped, the entire traffic has stopped. People have poured out of buildings and were watching, in fact, as one of the towers collapsed. And then you're really seeing a lot of people trying to move north away from any place downtown near the world trade center area people are just walking the subways are stopped entirely all around the area of the world trade center you can't get below 14th street and there's there just feels to be like a massive exodus of people walking north to get away from the area as far away as they possibly can maria i know kitty pilgrim is with you as well right, right kitty here. tell us what you've been able to report well, I'm, on i'm actually reporting from kennedy airport at the united terminal uh -huh. and um, i was here this morning flying out uh, when they made an announcement about 20 of 10 that all flights were grounded people thought it was just a normal course of uh, airport business these days and so it was not much of a reaction um, and then the news started to trickle through it was not an official announcement made uh, over the intercom kitty, kitty let me interrupt for just yep. a second uh, the associated press is reporting that uh, federal officials fear that a second hijacked plane or another hijacked plane is headed towards the Pentagon. And I'm looking for the time on this. Uh, we will continue to check that out. Kitty, I apologize for interrupting. Why don't you continue? Did we lose her? Um, everyone didn't react, but then the uh, news came through. I have never seen Kennedy in this condition. I've been here many times. People are in absolute shock. No one's talking. They were just staring at each other with their arms dropped to their sides. A pin could drop in the United Terminal. There were a couple hundred people there, and no one was saying anything. Um, after about 20 minutes, people rushed to the phones. You cannot phone out. There's no real access back to the city. People are trying to get back. They've unloaded the baggage from the planes. They've asked that everyone pick up their bag and take it, and take it out of the terminal and take it home. And they're asking everyone to please leave. People are just finding it difficult to leave. Um, they are not officially evacuating uh, Kennedy Airport at this point, at least at the United Terminal. Uh, the attendants have been asked to stay. And um, again, there's still several hundred people standing around not knowing what to do. No one's even speaking. And again, and again for people, uh, Kitty, thank you, not familiar with New York, Kennedy is the major airport handling uh, international flights into the city. It is also an enormous complex of, uh, of seven or eight or nine terminals. That's exactly uh, right. And in fact, the baggage has been unloaded into a separate terminal from where I am. And they're asking people to walk over, pick up their bags and take them out. Uh, it's virtually impossible to get from place to place at Kennedy. And of course, bridges and tunnels into Manhattan are inaccessible at this point. No one has anywhere to go. Back, uh, Kitty, thank you. And uh, we'll get back to you. Chris Plant at the Pentagon uh, has more. He joins us on the phone. Chris, what can you tell us? Hi, this is Chris Plant uh, at the Pentagon. Go can ahead. you hear me? Yes. Chris, we hear you. Go ahead. 
All right, the uh, area uh, to the west of the Pentagon has been evacuated further back by law enforcement and military officials as they anticipate a second aircraft arriving at the Pentagon. It's been deemed to be threatening enough where I saw at least one F-16 fighter jet uh, in the air over the Pentagon headed to the west where the plane was reportedly coming in from. Again, they're saying here that a second aircraft is expected to arrive at the Pentagon sometime soon. They take it seriously enough that they have scrambled at least one fighter jet that I saw, probably either from the D.C. Air National Guard or the Maryland Air National Guard, both of which fly F-16s. The west front of the building of the Pentagon along Route 27 uh, has now partially collapsed. About a 60-foot section of the building uh, uh, laterally has collapsed the entire five stories. The building is obviously, the fire is traveling inward in the building toward the courtyard in this wedge, as they call it, of the Pentagon, the westernmost wedge, Chris. which was just uh, refurbished and was in fact reinforced for terrorist attack and for just this sort of thing. Uh, I know that there were a significant number of injuries. I'm unaware of, uh, of any uh, numbers on fatalities at this point. Uh, people here who came from the building are suggesting that surely there were fatalities, but no one could confirm any. I have spoken to a number of people that I know who pulled people out of rubble. Uh, there were severe injuries. There are a number of helicopters here evacuating uh, injured people. Uh, and uh, I'm told by one senior military source that the, that the plane uh, in the side of the building has been tentatively identified as a Boeing 767, uh, a full-sized airliner, Boeing City 767. Uh, but that at this point, they're waiting for the arrival of a possible second plane, which has been deemed to be a threat. And as I said, fighter jets have been scrambled to address that matter. Uh, Chris, stay with us. That's an uh, extraordinary bit of information coming out of Washington now. Let me add to something. Let me add to something that we said earlier. We have a report now that a large plane crashed this morning. Uh, north of the Somerset County Airport, which is in western Pennsylvania, not too terribly far from Pittsburgh, about 80 miles or so. Uh, Boeing 767 jet, don't know whose airline it was, whose airplane it was, and we don't have any details beyond that which I have just given you. We don't know, we don't know if this is somehow connected to what has gone on in New York and Washington, but we do know that another plane has crashed this one about 80 miles south of Pittsburgh, or at least to the southeast of Pittsburgh. Rose Arce, one of our producers here uh, in New York, joins us on the phone. Rose, what do you have that's new? Yes, uh, just a, a while ago, I think you saw that uh, collapse of the top of the, of the World Trade Center. Well, it looks like a large chunk of that debris hit a building very close by, about two blocks away next to an elementary school, causing another explosion. So for the last few minutes, I've been watching people running from that direction. There was one man, oh, I'm not child, but I you saw on the street. I've seen several emergency service workers carrying other emergency service workers from the scene. There's a there's a haze everywhere. It's very, very difficult to see, but there has been a the whole area has been covered by soot and ash. I said it looks almost like snow. So as people are coming up the street running from the scene of this new explosion, you can see them slipping on the on the uh, ash and, and literally having to drag each other up the street. There's an incredible amount of panic down here in downtown Manhattan as people are realizing that they really need to leave the area and entirely after spending the last hour or so just watching this from afar. Rose, stay with us. Terrific work. Let me throw uh, another couple of pieces of information out as we continue to, uh, to put this all together into a straight line if we can. Uh, the United Nations has been evacuated. The United Nations building on the east side of Manhattan has been evacuated. The city is in, uh, this is election day, a primary election for mayor and city council races here in New York. That election has been postponed until further notice. Um, obviously, we are, we are in the middle of an extraordinary catastrophe that started at about 8.45 Eastern time here in New York when one plane crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. About a half an hour after that, as people were converging, as fire and police and rescue teams were converging on the scene, a second plane appeared uh, to the west of the Trade Center buildings and slammed into the second tower. That's what you just saw, fire shooting out the north and east side of the tower. 
shortly after that, we began to get reports of events taking place in Washington. Uh, an explosion which first came to us as a fire at the Pentagon. Now there's a report of a second hijacked plane heading towards the Pentagon. It is believed that one of the planes, perhaps both, but one of them we have been told was an American Airlines 767 that hit one of the Trade Center towers. About a half an hour after that, perhaps a little bit longer, lose track of time a little bit in these situations, the first tower, or the, uh, let me correct that, the south tower, the second tower, uh, the one to the left collapsed. Uh, it collapsed in a cascade of smoke and spark, and what we cannot tell you is if there was a second explosion uh, that caused that collapse or if it was simply, that's the first one, that's the uh, south tower collapsing, um, and that was about a half hour, give or take, after the planes hit the tower. Then shortly after that, just as the smoke was starting to clear away, the second tower, and that's what you're looking at now. Again, this was not very long ago, 10, 15 minutes ago, the second tower, it almost looks, it almost looks like one of those implosions of buildings that you see, except there is nothing controlled about this. This is devastation. How many people there are 50,000 people who normally go to work in the Trade Center buildings. How many of those people had arrived already? How many of those people were trapped in the upper stories? How many of those people have been hurt? How many of those people died? We cannot tell you now. We can tell you that hospitals throughout the New York area are receiving literally hundreds of patients. Uh, as, as, and they are performing triage. They are trying to figure out who could be treated, who needs help first. This is sort of standard operating procedure. We are just being told now that Israel has evacuated all its diplomatic missions around the world. Uh, Israel has evacuated its missions. We are told now that Yasser Arafat has condemned these attacks, and we don't know yet who's behind them. Britain has condemned these attacks. Germany has convened its National Security Council, and we will check and see if events are going on in those places, or if that is simply a reaction to what has gone on here in, in Washington and in New York. CNN's Gene Meserve joins us on the phone from Washington. Gene. Hay Street, which is one of the major thoroughfares here in Washington, it is absolute gridlock. It takes about 15 minutes to drive one block. Ordinarily, this time of day, there'd be nothing near this kind of traffic. You see pedestrians filling the sidewalks. Many of the businesses and offices here having closed. You see cars absolutely pouring out of the parking lots, contributing to the absolutely horrendous traffic situation. Many people trying to use their cell phones. However, cell phone service has become very difficult in this town because of the crush on circuits. For the most part, people appear to be very calm and collected. I will tell you, though, that as I drove, I looked at the car next to me full of some young women who I would guess were in their 20s, several of them crying their eyes out, obviously very upset as they listened to the radio and heard the news of what is happening in this city in New York also. Aaron, back to you. Jean, thanks. Jean was in Washington this morning as uh, she and the rest of uh, the organization continues to gather what facts we can, what facts are available in the wake of the extraordinary chaos that has followed this extraordinarily horrendous terrorist attack. American Airlines, uh, we are told, one of the planes involved in this was a hijacked American Airlines 767 uh, out of Logan Airport in Boston. American Airlines will say what is knows, what is is known as you look at the White House being evacuated a short time ago, or is that live? And I'm not sure uh, on my monitor which it is. I believe it's taped from a short time ago. In any case, American Airlines uh, will talk to reporters in about a half hour or so, 11.30 Eastern time, one of its planes involved in this, and we will bring that press conference to you live when it happens. Here in New York, hospitals are being overwhelmed. Uh, as hundreds of patients are being brought in and being treated. We cannot tell you, we, we would not even begin to guess how, what the numbers in this will be, how many people will have died by the time, by the time this uh, day is over, how many injuries have taken place in both Washington and New York. 
but as the former police commissioner Howard Safer told us a few moments ago, obviously the numbers are going to be extraordinary. Who do we have on the phone, guys? Just help me out here. Patty, are you there? Yes, I am here. What do you got? About an hour ago, I was on the corner of Broadway and Park Place. That's about a thousand yards from the World Trade Center when the first tower collapsed. It was a massive explosion. At the time, the police were trying desperately to evacuate people from the area. When that explosion occurred, it was like the scene out of a horror film. People started okay. stampeding away Patty, from it. Patty, Patty, I'm going to interrupt you. Uh, for a second. We, we told you there was a second plane that went down, this one about 80 uh, miles or so uh, southeast of Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll try now to connect with KDKA TV in Pittsburgh. Well, just so much for planning. We try, we will try again. Uh, again, we, we have reports that a plane has crashed in the Pittsburgh area, southeast of Pittsburgh, about 80 miles. And uh, at varying times, we've heard that this was a 767 and a 747. I'm not sure it matters which it is. What matters is that a plane has crashed in the Pittsburgh area. The Pentagon continues to monitor reports that another plane, a hijacked plane, is headed for that area. All, fl all flights have been canceled around the country. International flights heading towards the United States are being diverted uh, into Canada this morning. Patty, let me go back to you. Uh, as we look at uh, some tape from the ground. Patty, why don't you go ahead and continue? Okay, Aaron, I'm right now, I'm in the main building of Pace University, which is inside the fallout zone of all the debris from the two building collapses. At the time of the first building collapse, I was at Broadway and Park Place. There was a huge cloud of smoke. It overcame the crowd. People were stampeding. Literally, the debris was so thick, you could not see your hand in front of your face. I jumped around onto a building that was on Park Place and Beekman Street. When I was in there, people were coming in, they were crying, they were wailing, you couldn't see anything outside. After the smoke had cleared a little bit, I came outside. The scene was like a ghost town in the financial district, very eerie. You saw people being wheeled on gurneys away from the site of the explosion. People were coming out with masks over their face, anything they could put over their face, because the air was still very thick with debris. The ash on the ground is at least two inches thick. It's more like snow cover, a very eerie snow cover blanketing downtown Manhattan right now. Now, at the time, I was back on the corner again of Broadway and Park Place. At that time, the police started running toward us, telling everybody to move who was left on the street. I looked up, and that's when I heard the, <coughs> pardon me, that's when I heard the explosion. That's when the second tower came down. Again, whoever was left on the street started stampeding. I'm in the office, I'm, right now I'm in the main building of Pace University. People are crying, they have gas masks on their face. Authorities are making people go toward the basement. They're just doing anything that they can to move people away from the financial district. But again, it is a very horrifying scene down here, very eerie. Okay. Like Patty, a Patty, let me interrupt you. Uh, Mayor Giuliani uh, is on the telephone, he is part of New York One's coverage. We join our affiliate for that. Mayor, Mayor Giuliani, since uh, we have New Yorkers listening and, and obviously their again, thoughts are with urge, the people urge, who are down urge, there. Urge them to remain calm, to remain at home, or to remain at their place of business, unless they're in Lower Manhattan. By that I mean south of Canal Street. If you're south of Canal Street, Get out, walk, and walk slowly, uh, carefully. There are plenty of police around, but just walk directly. If you, if you can't figure out what else to do, just walk directly north. That'll get you out of the dangerous smoke area. It'll also do us a big favor. It'll open up those streets because we're going to be moving a large number of ambulances and uh, emergency personnel in and out of there all day. I've talked to the governor. He is putting the National Guard on alert so that they can relieve our police officers and our firefighters later this afternoon. And we've asked the federal government for help uh, from, the, from the urban search and rescue team. So uh, right now, we're using all of our police and firefighters and emergency personnel to help the people down there. Later on, we're probably going to need uh, reinforcements. Mayor Giuliani, I realize that it must be uh, more than a chaotic situation, particularly since the, the bunker has been compromised and cordoned off, but can you give us any sense, there are so many people watching now who must have loved ones down in that area and are concerned I, uh, of, of the heart, systematic... Goes out to them. I've never seen yes. anything uh, like this. I uh, was there from shortly after it happened and saw people jumping out of the World Trade Center. And, uh, it's a horrible, horrible situation. And all that I can tell them is that, that every resource that we have is attempting to rescue as many people as possible and it, the end result is going to be some horrendous number of lives lost i don't think we know yet but, but right now 
we have to just focus on saving as many people as possible. Can you give us a sense of if there is in fact some system being implemented, what that system is and uh, what, where people are being taken? People, people are triaging. People are being taken to uh, every area hospital possible, even uh, virtually within minutes. Uh, I drove down right past St. Vincent's Hospital and I could see them actually on the street ready uh, to take people and that was within minutes of, of the, uh, for the first uh, the first airplane hitting the World Trade Center. So the, ho the hospitals are ready. Uh, we'll be moving them to all different area hospitals, uh, triaging them. The main thing is having those streets open so that we can get people in and out of the southern part of Manhattan as quickly as possible so that we can move them uh, you know, to hospitals all over the city. And Mayor Giuliani will, uh, will let you... In place. They're, they're doing it. Uh, we just need the cooperation of people in, in getting out of there. We'll let you get back to uh, the operations there, Thank and you, we do appreciate you taking the time for us here. Once again, the only thing to do now is to remain calm and try to assist in the rescue effort. Thank you. Now let's pray. That's, that's New York's Mayor Rudy Giuliani talking to a CNN affiliate New York One here saying that clearly there's going to be tremendous number of lives lost on these attacks here in New York, urging people to stay calm and to leave the area calmly. The area is in the southern part of Manhattan, the way down on the tip of Manhattan Island. Uh, the mayor urging people to calmly move north. CNN's Jamie McIntyre is at the Pentagon. Jamie. Um, why don't you start, if you can, at the beginning here, as we try and, uh, and, and put some order to all of this. Uh, what happened? Well, let me just describe the scene that we have here, and I'll back up a little bit. But right now, I'm looking at the charred uh, facade of the Pentagon, a huge gaping hole on the side where the Pentagon heliport is located, the side that faces Arlington Cemetery. In front of me is a long line of rescue personnel with uh, um, backboards. They're just waiting for victims to be brought out so they can rush them to nearby medical facilities. I see a few uh, victims being treated on the grass uh, outside the Pentagon. Uh, firefighters continue to pour streams of water uh, onto the side of the building and huge black uh, cloud of smoke continues to billow out. It, it is a scene of utter destruction here. I'm sure it pales in comparison to the World Trade Center, but I've never seen anything like this uh, myself in the history of the Pentagon. There's been nothing like this. Uh, again, a huge gaping hole. You can see the exposed five floors of the Pentagon uh, offices just ripped apart. Um, our report is that an aircraft of some kind, and a, at least one witness identified it as a civilian aircraft, uh, hit the side of the building uh, shortly after those, uh, uh, the incident in the World Trade Center this morning. Uh, people who were in their offices nearby reported hearing a huge explosion, seeing uh, shards will come by their window. The entire Pentagon has been evacuated. Short time after this attack, uh, there were urgent announcements made over the loudspeaker telling people uh, to quickly get away from the building because they had reports of a second plane heading this way just two minutes away. Um, F-16 jets were scrambled over the Pentagon. I saw several of them go by, uh, but no second plane ever materialized, and uh, the building remained completely evacuated as firefighters continue to four uh, columns of water on the uh, devastated side of the Pentagon, and rescue personnel continue to whisk victims away. We have no uh, report at this time of how many casualties. Clearly, uh, dozens and dozens of people have been hurt, and we presume that there have been some deaths as well. It's hard to imagine otherwise, considering extent damage at the side of the building. And I can see just some of the windows uh, side of a, a stretch of the building, perhaps about perhaps uh, 40 or 50 feet wide. Uh, this looks like it has collapsed under the weight of the impact. Aaron? Jamie, thank you. Uh, so we have planes hitting the Pentagon, or plane hitting the Pentagon, two planes hitting the World Trade Center's uh, towers in New York. Alan Dobbs Frank joins us on the phone uh, in Lower Manhattan. Alan? Aaron, uh, just a uh Two or three minutes ago, there was yet another uh, collapse or explosion. I'm now out of sight. A good Samaritan has taken me in on Duane Street. But at a quarter to 11, there was another collapse or explosion following the 1030 collapse of the second tower. And a firefighter who rushed by us estimated that 50 stories went down. Um, the street yeah. filled with smoke. It was like a fire, uh, forest fire roaring down a canyon. Now, as I think Patty Sabg and others have told you, 
all of Manhattan is covered, uh, downtown Manhattan is covered with thick white ash and building material. Uh, the ambulances have been coming now from as far as Long Island. Uh, all the rescue workers are being equipped with gas or face filter masks. And uh, firefighters have been arriving even by pickup truck. Uh, Otherwise, the streets are now deserted. Uh, Alan, thank you. Alan Dodd Frank in Manhattan. A little more on this plane crash, which is the fourth incident, if you will. There were, uh, there was the plane crash at the Pentagon, crashing into the Pentagon. There were the two planes that hit the World Trade Center here in New York. And we don't know whether this fourth one is related or not, but the report is that a 747 en route from Chicago to New York City crashed in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, about 80 miles to the southeast of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's the incident. That's what we are hearing. And I'm standing next to a fireman. He said, yeah, they just bombed the Pentagon, too. Um, our, our colleague, Jeff Green, well, we have a little more sound here from witnesses. Man, I went to fire alarm company. The doorman goes to me, oh, wow, i never seen a plane flying so low. And we, we looked out at it, all of a sudden, boom, it, it, it seemed like it wasn't even real. And you know, we came running over here, closer to the place, and all of a sudden we saw the other explosion. I don't know, I don't know. I was in B Tower. B Tower? A, 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 a Tower. What floor were you on? A B1. What floor? The first one. What happened? Tell me. When I, a big explosion happened. Some guy came out. He was, his skin was all off. I helped him out. This is him all over. There's people jumping out of windows. I've seen at least 14 people jumping out of windows. It's, it's, it's horrific. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, anything else that you saw? Were you there for the second uh, hit yeah. by the plane? After, about 10 minutes later, the second building went off. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it. It just blew up. A big explosion. People started running. It was just chaos everywhere. Yes, I was right there. I was in the. I was down in the basement. Came down. All of a sudden, the elevator blew up. Smoke. I dragged the guy out. His skin was hanging off. And I dragged him out. And I helped him out of the out of, to the ambulance. Thank. You. The words of the words of some of the witnesses here in Manhattan this morning, and the pictures of what will, I suspect, before this is over, go down as one of the most horrific days in our lifetime. We're joined by our colleague, CNN's Jeff Greenfield. Aaron, you know what? In 1993, when terrorists bombed the World Trade Center, their plan was to knock one of the towers into the other, bringing them both down. That disaster was averted, and bad as that was, in a sense, America was lucky. Another terrorist attack in the planning was interrupted to blow up the uh, Lincoln Tunnel and submerge dozens, maybe hundreds of people. At the eve of the millennium, a terrorist, a suspected terrorist, was intercepted, you remember, at the Canadian the border Canadian on, his way to Seattle, border. on his way to Seattle. And I know that not so long ago, former President Clinton, in a private talk to a group, ruminated on how lucky the United States has been over the years to, with the combination of luck and the skill of anti-terrorist people, to avoid such things. What we are seeing now is nothing less than the worst nightmare that one could imagine come to life, probably worse than anyone could have imagined. You may remember that Tom Clancy wrote a novel that ends with a terrorist uh, hijacker crashing into the Capitol. The worst act of terrorist violence on American soil, the Oklahoma City bombing, killed fewer than 200 people. All we know today is that tens of thousands of people worked in that complex that has been destroyed. And I, I hate to say it this way, but this may be the day that America's luck ran out. Well, it, it is hard, isn't it? I mean, you look out here, and you see the Statue of Liberty to the right, and these buildings off to the left, the attacks on Washington. We don't know a lot about who's behind this or what this is all about, but the symbolism of these attacks is extraordinary. Is extraordinary. Uh, CNN's David Ensor is in Washington, and he joins us. David, 
Aaron, I'm talking to U.S. officials who are uh, obviously working on, on who is responsible for this. Uh, their working thesis is that this is overseas terrorism, not domestic. They say they cannot rule out additional attacks yet to come. In terms of claims of responsibility so far, uh, there is an Agence France press report uh, in which a group with the word Palestine in the name claims responsibility. And there is also a report uh, quoting uh, personnel close to uh, Osama bin Laden, the fugitive Saudi uh, accused terrorist, denying that that group was involved. But again, uh, uh, U.S. officials say they can't add, uh, shed any light on whether these uh, reports are correct or incorrect. Usually when this kind of attack occurs, you have claims of responsibility from all sorts of people who had nothing to do with it. So it's a very fluid situation at this point. But the, uh, the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States has been evacuated from its headquarters in Langley, Virginia. There are some key personnel still in the headquarters, but uh, the operations center has been moved elsewhere. U.S. officials saying they don't want to talk about where exactly the headquarters uh, staff and operations staff has been moved to. But that staff is focusing now on trying to find any shred of information that could help the U.S. government figure out who is doing this and how to put a stop to it. Aaron? David, as a, you tell me if I'm right or wrong here. As a practical matter, there are not a whole lot of groups that the United States government knows about that are sophisticated enough, have the kind of money, the resources to pull off something like this. Fair enough? That's absolutely true. And obviously, uh, despite the denial, uh, attention will quickly turn to the bin Laden group because it has long tentacles. It has connections with all sorts of other groups. Uh, we saw uh, at the Millennium uh, a, a group of Algerians apparently involved in trying to uh, uh, arrange bombings in the United States and now there is evidence being produced uh, in court uh, sessions that those Algerians were working for the bin Laden group. So that group certainly will come under immediate suspicion. There are very few others that could have pulled this off. All right. I mean, just because of the enormity of it all and the sophistication required to stage these multiple attacks, this is not something some small cell can pull off. This is obviously a group or groups uh, well-financed and extraordinarily well-organized. Uh, that's, that's correct. Now, another thing you'll notice is that the... Uh, uh, you remember the attack on the USS Cole in the, in the Yemen harbor. That was the first time that kind of an attack using small boats with bombs in them had been used against uh, an American warship. Uh, it worked once. Uh, now the US Navy uh, has taken steps to make that much more difficult to do. Officials saying this may work once. Uh, they, they will now have to take measures to try to make sure that this kind of thing can't be done again. But these are apparently hijackings of civilian aircraft. So it was a sort of modus operandi that was dreamed up in some evil terrorist's mind and done on a massive scale here today, Aaron. Uh, David, thank you. CNN's David Ensor, uh, our national security correspondent, on what he is hearing what he is hearing, what he knows, what the reports are uh, as we approach 11.20 Eastern time. For those of you uh, just joining us, uh, and as you can see on your screen, the Taliban, the government in Afghanistan, uh, expected to make a statement soon, and we'll monitor that for you. Uh, for those of you just joining us, let me try and put as many of these pieces together as I can uh, as we stand here in New York. At about 8.45 Eastern Standard, Eastern Daylight Time this morning, uh, the first of the Trade Center towers was hit by a, a plane. Uh, it crashed into the south side of the tower. About a half an hour later, a second plane came from uh, the right, and you can see it coming behind the first tower, and then it hits the tower, and you'll see the flame and smoke coming out, I guess three quarters, maybe a little more up the tower. Uh, that's where this all began. About a half an hour after that, the first of the t that tower that is now you see in flame there in your shot collapsed. Uh, the top collapsed. And there was an enormous, uh, uh, I don't want to say explosion, but there was an enormous plume of, spo of smoke, sparks, as we looked over from where we're standing. Uh, and then a, a little bit after that, and I, I want to be careful on time because it, it seemed 
uh, perhaps 10 or so minutes, but I'm not sure. The second tower, which in fact was the first one hit, uh, collapsed as well, and that's what you're about to see. Um, our reporters in the area say they heard loud noises when that happened. It is unclear to them and to us whether those were explosions going on in the building or if that was simply the sound of the collapse of the buildings as they collapsed, uh, making these huge noises as they came down. But as we, as we look back, the smoke now, which has gone from white to a kind of gray, clearing away, we are, I guess, Jeff, is I, I, you know, I, I don't, I want to know what's behind the smoke, but I have a, the worst feeling is well, that very little. And the fact is that we've already been hearing from even the fragmentary reports from people on the ground, stories beyond horror, people jumping out of windows because of the, of the flames. The fact that this happened shortly before nine and then the second hit shortly after nine means that most of the people were either right in the vicinity or actually at their desks. Um, so one doesn't want to be gr overly grim, but the fact is there were large thousands of people were in these two buildings. And again, 50,000 people come to work in those buildings. Many thousands more pass through those buildings every day. There are retail shops uh, on the lower floors of the trade center. It is where the path trains from and New Jersey the, come in. Correct. The trains, uh, the commuter trains coming from uh, the other side of the river from New Jersey come in and drop off and pick up their passengers. So it is an extraordinarily busy area. It is also an area for a number of reasons, rich in symbolism uh, to this city and to the country. You can see from where we are, the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor in the sea. So that's what happened in New York. At about the same time, and again, I don't, I don't want to put times on much of this yet, uh, after one of these hijacked planes hit the Trade Center in New York, events started to unfold in Washington. A plane hit the Pentagon. Um, and then there was a major fire at the Pentagon, and the Pentagon has now been evacuated. The State Department has been evacuated. Uh, the president, who was in Florida, went before cameras to denounce, as you would expect, and as we would expect, this terrorist attack, promising to hunt down those responsible. It was the president himself who first used, at least as I heard the story unfold today, the word terrorism. Uh, there was no doubt in his mind, at least. Uh, the president now uh, has heading back. We are now getting a report from uh, that American Airlines says that one of its flights, a flight from Boston to, I believe, Los Angeles. Correct me, guys, uh, if I'm wrong, uh, is is down, or at least they've lost contact with it. 81 people on board. This would be the second. Of, uh, of American Airlines flights to have been involved, presumably, in this event. Another flight, this one from Dulles to Los Angeles, is down with 54 passengers on board. So, uh, again, so there are two American Airlines, one Dulles, Washington, D.C., to Los Angeles, the other Boston to Los Angeles. Uh, both American Airlines planes reported by the airline to be down. It is also believed that an American Airlines plane, a 767, was involved in one of the hits on the Trade Center as well. We don't know if there's a reason why it is American and not any other. We won't speculate as to whether there is or not. We'll just tell you what the facts are as we get them, and that, that's what we have. American says two of its planes down, and I assume that is two other than the one that hit the Trade Center, and you guys check that out to make sure I'm right. Jeff. And we have a report of a crash in Somerset County, outside right. of Pittsburgh. Uh, right, a, I believe a 767, though we're getting reports perhaps a 747, which doesn't quite fit into uh, what we believe flies Chicago to New York, uh, is also down as well, and um, I do not know uh, the airline involved there. Let me just go back on, on uh, uh, okay, I do now, it's a United Airlines plane. Uh, so we have a number of planes down, a number of planes involved in these attacks. Uh, the Boston to Atlanta, if I'm reading the notes correctly, uh, had uh, an, an American 767 with 81 passengers on board, nine flight attendants, two pilots. Flight 11. Reported down, that's American Airlines Flight 11. And American Airlines Flight 77, which is a 757 jetliner, 
uh, Dulles Airport outside of Washington to Los Angeles International with uh, 58 passengers on board, four flight attendants, two pilots also reported down. And then there is this United Airlines jet which crashed uh, about 80 miles, 80 miles to the southeast of uh, Pittsburgh. We should also morning. mention, I think, Aaron, that inevitably some of these early fragmentary reports are going to be needing correction, and that will be done as soon as possible. We had a report of a second hijacked plane on the way to Washington. Uh, Capitol Police were reporting that we, there have been no signs of that plane. We simply, at this point in, in this awful story, have to just tell our viewers we will do everything we can to report this accurately. If fragmentary reports need amending or correcting, that will be done well, immediately. And, again, and I, I think, in, in, in fairness here, there is in a number of places right now, perhaps four or five, chaos. And numbers that come out um, aren't necessarily going to hold up. Uh, and in our reporting, we will be a bit conservative on some of this until we track it down. Uh, there's no point in allowing this thing to seem worse than it is. It is already horrendous, and we don't need to make it any worse by, uh, by misstating numbers. And we want you to keep that in mind. Uh, CNN Medical Unit reports that the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, the Centers for Disease Control, is preparing bioterrorism teams to respond to the incidents. Uh, this, we are told, is simply precautionary. We have uh, absolutely no reports and no evidence that there is any uh, biochemical or bioterrorism going on. But clearly what is happening in every department of the United States government, and I suspect in every department of most major cities right now, the plan, the plan that they hope they never have to implement, the plan that they spent years preparing, is now in effect, not just here, not just in Washington, but around the country, because no one knows precisely where this is going. Uh, CNN, my colleague Judy Woodruff joins us from Washington. Judy. Aaron, uh, we've been watching this uh, here in the Washington Bureau. I'm in the studio now just a few blocks from the Capitol, from the United States Capitol. And the first thing I want to tell you is that uh, we are all, everyone I'm sure on their minds is God rest the souls of those who've lost their lives this morning in New York, in Washington, uh, near Pittsburgh, in Pennsylvania. Um, it is just a story th for which there are no words to describe. Here in Washington, we are keeping a very close watch on the Pentagon. You've been reporting, Aaron, uh, and uh, other CNN correspondents. Uh, a plane evidently crashed, a commercial jetliner crashed into the Pentagon earlier this morning. A yeah. approximately 60-foot section of this building, which is, of course, the headquarters of all uh, the military for the United States, was on fire as a result of this uh, this crash and then collapsed uh, these are some of the uh, the pictures we've been uh, we've been bringing our audience from the pentagon we've been we've watched people being treated by first aid personnel there we have no information yet on casualties on uh, the number of people who who uh, may have been hurt or may have died in this incident although emergency personnel on the scene have said surely there have been casualties there uh, elsewhere in Washington, uh, every federal building has been evacuated or is in the process of being evacuated. I'm now told that United Airlines is now saying that flight, can you tell me the number of the flight, 93 has crashed in Pennsylvania. Now I don't, a flight from Newark, New Jersey to San Francisco. Now we don't know if this is the same airplane that uh, Aaron was reporting a little earlier crashed in Somerset County near Pittsburgh. Uh, Aaron had reported that some minutes ago, and now we are getting a confirmation from United Airlines that its flight uh, United 93 uh, on the way to San Francisco has crashed. So we now have at least two uh, commercial airline companies in the United States, American Airlines reporting two of its passenger jets down, uh, one flight, Dulles, in Washington to Los Angeles, and then another flight from Boston to Los Angeles down, and now we have United Airlines reporting at least one airline or airliner down uh, with concern about another one. 
So the pieces of this story continue to come together. Uh, I have to say, in my 30 years as a journalist, I have never seen anything like this, never covered a story of the dimensions of this. And I, I'm sure it's safe to say that's the case for, for my colleague Aaron Brown and for any one of the other many, many correspondents, producers, and others with CNN and our colleagues at the other news networks. And I would just remind you that CNN right now has producers, correspondents uh, all around the world who are watching for uh, any more information that we can bring you at this point. As, as uh, Aaron and Jeff Greenfield have been saying in the last few minutes, everything we have right now is fragmentary. We, we are simply reporting to you what we are learning from police, from the federal government, from the CIA, from David Ensor, from our other correspondents. And I'm now told that uh, former U.S. Uh, Army Commander uh, General Wesley Clark is joining us on the telephone. Former commander of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, is joining us from, is it, from Little Rock, Arkansas. General Clark, uh, from your knowledge of the military, you know the Pentagon. What are you thinking right now? Well, good morning, Judy. Uh, first of all, we've got to try to assess what's really happening and as all of the news reports indicate this is it's clearly a, a coordinated effort it wasn't announced and we it hasn't been announced that it's over and we don't know how it will finally conclude so there's likely to be more trouble before uh, before all of this concludes so we've got to protect the American people first we've got to look after those who are injured we've got to take precautionary measures to deal with future incidents and I think all of that's underway with a lot of responsible action by people everywhere. The damage at the Pentagon is unclear from all the news reports that I've seen. Uh, the one report that said it crashed into the Army side of the building, uh, there are command centers in various places of the Pentagon and there are many other alternate command centers. So I don't think there's really any issue about the command and control of the United States Armed Forces. I'm sure that's very solid right now. General Clark, why do you say uh, there are likely to be, there's likely to be more trouble? Well, we're hearing still reports of, uh, of aircraft that are out there. There's no way of knowing when all of the possible incidents uh, have either taken place or, or been aborted by uh, whoever it is that's behind this. And so we, we, have to, we have to be ready for whatever might happen next. General, can you give us some sense of, uh, clearly the United States has never experienced anything of this magnitude, but what, is the, what are the leaders of our, of our military, uh, the, the Joint Chiefs, uh, the Secretary of Defense and others, what, what presumably are they doing right now in order to be on top of a situation where you have the Pentagon on fire, New York City in a state of chaos, and every federal building in Washington uh, evacuated? Well, first of all, we'll be trying to we'll be trying to assess what happened. We'll be making sure that the uh, protection posture of our bases worldwide and all of our units out there is raised so that uh, we're able to protect our forces and our family members. And then we'll be looking to provide assistance to uh, wherever such incidents might occur, whatever military capabilities there will be that could be of use will be certainly made available to the other agencies of state, local, and federal government who are involved in trying to deal with these tragedies right now. Then beyond that, we'll be waiting for the information to come in about uh, who may have been behind this, and we'll be looking at what measures can be taken to uh, strike and prevent further actions or in uh, punitive retaliation. Well, speaking of that, uh, General Clark, wouldn't you agree there are very few of the terrorist groups, at least that we're familiar with, who would have the capability to pull off something this coordinated on this scale? I think that's exactly right. I, there's, there's only one group that has ever indicated that it has this kind, kind of ability, and that's Osama bin Laden's. So obviously that'll be the first suspicion. Are you, clearly we are all in a state of shock, General Clark, but is it fair to say that you, you're not truly surprised by this given what we've heard from, from that particular group? And again, we don't know who's behind this, but uh, given what we do know. 
Well, there have been many threats made against the United States and threats of terrorism. And we know that the World Trade Center has been a target. We know that aircraft have been hijacked and we know that car bombings are used in many places in the world. And uh, there's no doubt that for a long time there have been groups who have tried to target the United States. Uh, normally, many times we've gotten indications.